Hello and welcome back to FSL Dota 2 Open. We are at the grand finals right now between Foxy Gaming and Brenny Sports. By the way, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. My name is Huller and this is Arthur. What are we expecting in this grand finals, Arthur? We are finally done with all the BL1s and now we are going into the first series, first BL3 series grand finals. This is where the strategies are going to kick in, really. And I'm just nothing but excited for all this um, amazing Mm -hmm. players to play out their strategies we're gonna see you know dusa getting contested a lot whether it be it banned or picked or some just very I, I i couldn't wait for all the strategies that these teams have for themselves and and we saw the last time right right where benny brandy sports actually beat fox foxy gaming knocked them into the lower bracket um and it was what like a best of one so it's kind of a little underwhelming because it's one of those moments where yeah we got knocked down or whatever, but we can we want to fight back, right? And so these best of threes is like the true test in terms of the strategy and uh, the draft of the, uh, that that's going to happen. So we're going to just jump into that one now. But before we do, let's give a quick shout out to our sponsors of Intel, Yahoo, and Tokenized Exchange. Please give a shout out to them for uh, you know helping out with all of everything FSL Dota Two Open Ten related. Um, and actually, if you go to the FSL Dota Two page Facebook page, you can actually Five sign up for their remain. Intel Mother's Day giveaway, and then you have a chance to win an avenger cpu box i7 10 700k for the best frame rates low latency gaming with the Dying intel's team. core processor but we're in the draft now this is game one what are you liking uh in this one i think both sides are going for a lot of aggression the brain spot they started with this other spirit first pick plus puck and tusk a lot of mobility from Radiant all these heroes and there's a lot of early game aggression they can pull it out with foxy gaming go for this relatively team fight intensive draft with Santor, phoenix and shaman a lot of damage and disables as well but if you like if you ask me i like i really like the Santor phoenix combo a Ten little bit more here because remaining. so far there's no one from brains but they can really take down the egg so they have Five to find at remaining. least one hero here with the last two picks that can really go on the phoenix and threaten him yeah, it's actually quite interesting here. I mean, you got the Earth Spirit. It's got to be a four. Tusk usually is a four. But in this case, it looks like they've got overlapping roles. And uh, maybe I don't know how this is going to work in terms of the, you know, the network that or net worth that is available to all of to their team. But you've got the puck as well. Um, and, and I'm thinking it's going to be, I mean, the puck you play it almost anywhere except for the one. But now you've got the Terror Blade that's giving away the position one here. But uh, your thoughts on Bren's draft so thus far? I like the synergy between the uh, first three picks. I think these are all three heroes that want to be jumping in and instantly killing people off. I think that's also another... Ten also, Tusk and Esprit, both of them have a way to get onto the Shadow Shaman. So it's so hard for Five Shaman to get the lockdown on either Puck or the Terror Blade. I, I think there's a good way for Brandy Spot to go to the back line of Foxy Gaming to create a lot of chaos. But Terror Blade would be a slow hero though. Even though Terrible is like the winning condition here for them, it's also an amazing egg hitter as well. But I'm afraid their positioning in fights or the formation for themselves might be a little bit split up when the puck and toss up split goes for the back line and Terrible is left alone in the front line. That could yeah. be a problem for Brand. But aside from that, if they can play that out nicely, they, they actually have a lot of ways to determine the fight themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, okay. But, uh, like, are you looking to protect the egg? Are you looking to, like, what do you you counter into Terror Blade as a Foxy Gaming pick here? Mm, they probably want to find a hero that is great against the, the Terror Blade here. So they have a battle winning condition. And that would be the face of what the old school counter to the Terror Blade, right? You, the Terror Blade pops meta, you just kill him in the chrono. And it's also one of the Radiant best protection for the back. Phoenix Egg as well. However, Faces White is not a completely free white game though. Against us, Spirit Park, Double Silence, and Coil as well. The Faces White, he does have his strengths here, but the weaknesses are pretty obvious too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, Earth Spirit, Ten Puck, Tusk, all of these can kind of not let him just time walk off that damage very quickly. Again, you, you mentioned the silence, so obviously, the stuns are all there as well. So, um, just you know it's it's one of those things that were yeah it, it deals with terror blade but it doesn't really deal with the rest of the team very well mm -hmm. yeah so i think i think for gaming here they have to play their own style just pull off their um wombo combo dombo here coming up from yeah. their uh faces of phoenix and also shaman 
So I think I think if they could do that, that would be a pretty good outlook of team fight for themselves. They also always have the centaur to get away from the from the metro metamorphosis just to buy time for themselves to reset the fight when the meta is down. And uh, Foxy here protecting the faceless in, in the sense of banning out both the Veno and the LC. Yeah, Very good against really the good. faceless void in the lane. Um, Brent, on the other hand, have con Five with the seconds. Zeus ban, which I think is nice because obviously Foxy Gaming, well, they want to burst you when they chrono you. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. But um, with only 23 seconds in terms of the reserve, what are you looking to ban here as Brent? Mm, probably Inwalker. I think Inwalker is another hero that can uh, really yes. help the Chronosphere to, mm -hmm. to bring in the in instant burst damage. Um, that that's gonna require Fox Gaming to have an Inwalker player though. I'm not sure if um, the mid player of Foxy actually does play Inwalker. I've never seen that. Oh, they run it until the last second of reserve time, and they decided to go with the Wind Ranger ban. That's okay too. Even though Wind Ranger is not super amazing against Puck, but it's definitely one of the better heroes that can instantly bring down the Terror Blade. All right, they've got, got to go with the Sand King here. So uh, very team fight oriented. We're going to just death ball and go kind of style. Uh, but Brandy Sports, 19 seconds, and you've got that one extra second. So uh, uh, what's the pick here? You're, you're probably, are you okay with Puck mid? Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, I'm okay with Puck mid. I think it should be pretty okay against Sand King. I think you won the early levels on Puck. Is this the Doom? No, axe. okay. They go for the Axe. Heroes. All right. I mean, they are just straight up wanting to run into Foxy Gaming here. All of their heroes, they want to be in front of Foxy. They want to be in the one initiating. So Foxy Gaming, though, they do have a lot of good counter initiation here. Face of Sword, LT, Egg, Stampede, plus the Epicenter from Sand King. Those are really great counter initiation stuff. And they also have Centaur to be the one standing in front to soak up the initiation, which is the most important thing here because that enables all the counter initiation that comes in. Uh, I'll, uh, if you if we purely look at draft, I would say Foxy Gaming has a much easier draft to, uh, to play out. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be playing around their cooldowns. Like, that's the biggest thing, right? Can Brandy Sports split up this team or, you know, bait out some sort of ultimates, go back out, go back in? Like, you need to be very, uh, it, it, they need to work for it, so to speak, in terms of those late game team fights. It, it's going to be interesting to see just how Brand decides to take on those fights. Because, again, I think you, 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 you stated it correctly in the sense of Foxy Gaming, they have a much easier time in terms of play style and what they need to do with their draft. Yeah. Thankfully for Foxy Gaming, even though they are running a very ultimate intensive lineup, but the winning condition of Brandy Sport, which is the Terror Blade, the Metamorphosis cooldown is almost as long as Chronosphere. True. So it's going to be very hard for Brandy Sport to abuse the timing, the, the, the downtime, uh, the downtime from Foxy Gaming to punish anything. They could keep going for kills, yeah, for sure, but you really want to be taking towers. Mm -hmm after getting right. killed. So that's the that's the tough part with brain spots here. Okay, and we're gonna be underway. This is gonna be game one of the grand finals, FSL Dota 2 Open. We're gonna go into it. Any predictions? Not looking at the draft now, but we should have probably done this even before we drafted, but who did you like going in just team-wise? Honestly, I think I like Foxy now, knowing how they have been climbing back to the grand final from um, lower record. I think they've shown very good persistence. And the teamwork from them are pretty amazing as well. So honestly, I'll, I'll like Fox Gaming, but I do think this series will go to game three. Oh, Jia! Oh, Jia just walks up. What are you doing? Looking for that warden. I think they did a little research because I think that she's actually put down the ward like that last time. And I think that, you know, Foxy Gaming were like, hey, we, we saw the replay, we saw what you did, and we're going to set the bear trap for you. Yeah, normally Tusk would like to be trying to get first blood with the team because of the tech team. But Foxy here, they are they are completely ready for that. They know that Brainstorm might be doing such a smoke play to wrap around. That's why they were having five men there guarding the high ground. Yeah, they were just waiting. They knew she was going to do that. And I mean, she, yeah, she's got brown boots and just an observer ward here. But um, is, is this the right build for a position five Tusk? Yeah, that's completely okay. He definitely needs the boost of travel. Otherwise, um, the, I mean, boost of speed. Otherwise, the boost of speed will come very, uh, very late. So that's okay. She's also started. playing with the Terror Blade, so Tag Team plus Metamorphosis, there's some good synergy as well to, for them to run down enemy easily. The only thing from the last, the only bad thing from the last first blood attempt from a Foxy here is that Shaman was forced to get level one Shackle. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that could 
that could come back to haunt them in the early level one laning phase a bit because not having the Eater Shock actually Shaman don't really do anything in this lane. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you, you got to make some sacrifices at times. Getting first blood secured for your team is also very good. Um, but okay, Cat Chaser and uh, on the Centaur and Sleepless with Shaman here versus uh, Gia's Tusk and Jill's a TB a Metamorphosis to start things off. Who do you give the edge to between these? Oh, hold on. Gia is already in deep trouble here. Check her into stun. Oh, yeah. Jill. Okay. They don't have enough damage, but they brought Tusk to a very low HP, and she does not have the South send it out, send out preemptively. So just gonna be playing with a very low HP for quite a while here. Yeah, she's looking to trade with this, and uh, mind you, Shadow Shaman's base damage of 74 is very, very high, especially at level one. So she does need to be a little bit careful here. Yeah, I would say the age oh, oh. shackle. Cat Chaser's coming. The stomp? Oh no, she was she pump faked it, but she didn't actually do it. Tech team was used though. Mm. I'll say this lane really gets comfortable for Jill and Jia once they hit like level three. When there's another round of metamorphosis plus uh, an ice shard or snowball, I think that's when they can really threaten a kill on this duel. The other lanes though are looking pretty solid for both sides overall. They are all get just really quiet phase. Both sides are getting farmed. Oh, what they got the stomp in. And they do have a shackle if they want to go. Yeah, they're going to do this. They have a number of creeps available to them. And Jill is going to back off here. And Gia not being able to provide too much as she was looking to just pull there. Mm. Thankfully, there's a south coming. So there will be a south for Jill very soon. Feels oh, like... It out. Yeah. The Foxy Duos have already put down a lot of pressure here against Brandon's first safe lane. And Sleepless, now he's, she's gonna get the big pull off. So that's gonna help Centaur regain the lane equilibrium a lot better. Actually, Legaya was in there just tanking some of those creeps when Hazalia wanted to just tank them and just use uh, uh, her, her spin to just kind of farm everything. But she's pulled the lane back here, and uh, that's a decent amount of creeps here. Does need to be a little bit careful. So talking about this lane, Faceless Void of Phoenix versus uh, Ligaya's Earth Spirit and the Axe of Hazelia. Who who has the edge? I'll say it's a trade farm lane here. Um, unless Phoenix and Faceless Void misplay or get out of position. Otherwise, it's really hard for them to threaten and kill. Because Axe is a hero that he wants to be playing aggressively, but he also can just um, calm down, sit quietly and just farm. Because he farms so much more efficient than Void. A spirit, though, it's really up to whether or not a spirit can find a good opening for herself. And uh, Hazelia here, um, we, we know just how, how strong she is as an offlaner here, but she's playing Axe. Uh, Nana and them are just kind of trading a little bit. Honey Lisa's doing a good job of stacking and pulling, just, uh, just constantly just changing up the equilibrium as much as possible. So she's doing a good job in that sense. Yeah, I would say she's doing very efficiently. Like... She's not getting too much from this lane, not getting any kill on The roll in, they have the tag team in. The Metamorphosis is not going to be used. Sleepless is getting slowed down. They kick in, the snowball, and they do get Sleepless. Cat Chaser's now running for her life. She's going to get, a, you know, hit a couple times, but she's a little bit tankier than Sleepless was. Yeah, that's the timing we were talking about. The second round of Metamorphosis plus Ice Shot or Snowball. Easily securing a kill from themselves. The top lane, knowing that Aspire has left the lane, they're trying to make some aggressive move from Hazaya, but even without Ring of Health, or anything like that. She's really so tanky. Yeah, the Phoenix dive away. She does have a salve. That's why she's being aggressive. And uh, you might as well. This is using your resources to your advantage, so to speak. Oh, she's got the salve, and it will be instantly popped. Honey Lisa at least gets that off. If if Hazaya saw this stack cam for her, for the faces, why she might just pull the creeps to the stack cam and clear them together. Oh, bottom side, cat chaser, a lot in a lot of trouble, but she will be able to get out. And the Vanguard should be ready very soon. We'll be ready. And Miri and uh, Nigand. Uh, Nigand has been thrown out the Sand King left and right in terms of the mid. Um, but what do you think about this matchup? Mm, I think level 6 is where Puck can start threatening a kill. Ask for help from the Spirit, coil him, kick him, kick the Sand King out of the coil, and maybe they can get a kill here. Even Jia is here just to refill the bottle. Uh, I think they are really they are really hanging around to wait for the level six timing from Mary. Dyer are scanning. Okay. 
Okay. And uh, Miri's uh, still tops in terms of the last hits. She's doing a very good job. Uh, Nigan is trying to just kind of go even at this point. It's, uh, you know, 22 and 2. Nice pearl strike onto everything. Sandstorm as well. But she, they do have a sentry, so they should be able to spot that, at least in the mid lane. Um, Cat Chaser here is probably looking to just pull on his on her own. Ooh, Vanguard. Five and a half minute Vanguard. That's two kills for a name, and this Centaur is not as easy to kill anymore, even with the tag team. But it seems like they still want to go for it, though. Oh, they've got the tag team. They're going to go with a two-man stun. Aether Shack doing a little bit of work, and actually it's a three versus two, but the three are actually running. <laughs> They're actually taking more damage than they do to the Centaur, <laughs> and that's the power of the Wenga and two points on Retaliate. Without the Metamorphosis, they actually can't really threaten this Centaur at all. Honey Lisa is nearby. Nigan is just going to get the rune. And if we're looking at the top lane, Nana and uh, Hazelia will be left alone in the top lane. Yeah, I like how Faces were went for this uh, casual mobbing mask first. This is going to help her. They got the shackle, but yeah, there's no way under tower. Uh, and the TP's coming. They're going to go right into the mid lane. Gia goes down. There's no shackle. The mid lane. All right. And uh, yeah, no shackle. Just used it. And that was kind of the unfortunate thing where Sleepless was... Uh, you, you you got the TV under tower, but then now it's on cooldown, and then they can make a move on you. And that's the thing about having two of the same style of heroes, right? Us three toss, they both want to be running in, but they are running into the Centaur and the Sand King. So, so there's no long, then there's not enough long range spellcaster coming from Brand or Ingen. Oh, in the mid lane. The snowball forward, they're trying to keep Miri alive. She's going to bottle for now. Nigan getting a little low. Nice little uh, TP by Gia there, keeping her. Uh... Puck mid alive. All the lanes are getting stagnant here for Foxy Game, but this is what they want to get to because that we we talk about how ulti reliant they are as a team. Radiant's they really want to stabilize the laning phase and start fighting once they have their bigger bigger ultimates up. So this slow tempo of game is actually benefiting them a lot right now. Mm -hmm. It's helping them, and Hazelia is just consistently just pushing out the top lane. Nana is looking to just TP bottom. Just got to get farmed somewhere. And uh, it looks like they're going to disengage there. Miri's making a move top lane. They do have a nice scan in the top. TPs are coming. Honey Lisa nearby. But it looks like she's by herself. Mm, oh, one is the, is the loneliest pack. number. Oh, the roll in. The orb tried to Phoenix dive away, but she gets feet dream coiled. And it looks like she's going to go down. And Azalea will happily take the Culling Blade kill there. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Mm. I need it's like she, she, she tried her best. This is actually uh, the job of the Phoenix to just handle the dead lane. Even though she died, she managed to force a Dream Coil on herself. So that's not too bad. And Nana has Dyer's really relocated herself to the bottom attack. side, Radiant's bring down the tower alongside the Centaur. Gone. This is a good trade for them. Yeah. Like we say, All they want them. to play the game slow. If they don't get to defend the tower, they should aim to, to get a trade. And they managed to do that. So that's totally equal. They totally equal, equalize what Brains did there with the, with the tower trade. They might not even lose a, their own tower. Ningun is here. Oh, they're charging up the epicenter. They're going to look to go. He goes once white at a pearl strike right onto Hazelia. She's getting a little bit low. She's under. She's going to have to use her call for now. The roll in is going to be a little off the mark. Honey Lisa is now joined. Gets kicked aside. Hazelia does go down. Honey Lisa will secure that kill. The guy will ride on a skateboard and run out of there. Oh, it seems like they managed to defend the tower. That's even better than. That's even better. Nigaya walks into the NC. She scouts out the two cams that are stacked. Maybe they will want to make some move here before the Sand King or the Void goes on and finish them. The Jia here just uh, actually just trying to retake their jungle. Um, and here comes the TPs right on the outpost on the bottom. Tusk oh. is going to look to go in and they found a Centaur all by herself. And all five of them are there just to make sure that, uh, Cat Chaser dies there. Yeah, that's what? That's a, that's a Metamorphosis used. That's five man rotation, two TP used. That's all. That's going to create so much space for Ningen at the top side to push out the lanes. Faces Void. He's also farming the ancients, ancients already. And that's a camp being stacked again by the Foxy's dual support. So they're getting a lot out of this, but they're getting scouted by these very deep ops placed by the by the Earth Spirit early on. Oh, smoke? Onto what? 
they got the void and they got they kicked him back that might have been a little bit of a mistake but nonetheless they did secure the kill so they did get, get, they did kill nana in the end yeah that's a good kick like he, the guy kicked him out of the coin so he breaks the coin gets a stun received the damage oh, as well sleepless fast fingers at least with the hex but the snow the shards is going to be on point the tps are coming the sun ray there's no way you save her just the amount of life that she had but miri still has the haste and she's on her speed racer and she's running right directly at honey lisa cancels the self silences and disrespects her by killing honey lisa yeah the, the deep observer placed by ja about five to six minutes ago are really giving them a lot of, a lot of advantage to make all these kind of very aggressive move smoking to the face void diving the phoenix are uh, all thanks to this observer and this is why we always say support, you can carry the game by giving good vision to your team. And that's how Jia demonstrates her impact here. Alright, I try to give my team good vision, um, but they don't actually use it. So what do I do? You have to use a mic more often than tell your team, come guys, make, let's make use of my vision. You have to ask themselves politely as well, that's the key. You have to ask them oh. politely. Okay, well I'm definitely not polite, so I think that, that that's it. Why are you so rude? Yeah, well, you know, you know, sometimes it's gamer rage, right? It's like, <laughs> get over here! Ah! <laughs> and they've got the Hex in, they've got the Shackle, nice two-man Burrow Strike, that's on point, into the Centaur Stomp as well, and they kill him. Oh, the Snowball, for at least for now, but that's just gonna pull on the inevitable. The Walrus Punch, she sticks away, Gia making plays, and then they've had the Shards, but now nah, that's not enough. The guy is now rolling in, but it looks like it's a little too little too late, and they take the T1 mid. That was such a crucial crucial borrow strike there like you can see Jia was walking to the park trying to snowball safe and then borrow strike comes in two man borrow strike into two man full storm that was some really good spell spell stage coming out from foxy and I, that's why i like that teamwork a lot i feel like they have a very good chemistry the target selection are pretty on point as well as long as the spell usage mm -hmm. It's 6-6, six, six. I mean, 1k now with Lee just on the way of Foxy, but they've taken the T1 mid, that's a pretty big one, they've got the bottom as well. Um, but how do they kind of further snowball this? Mm, they can use the smoke again and try to make use of their Wombo combo, I think that's one way to um, enlarge the lead. And also they, they should not be the one being too pressured as well because they can all skill. Their heroes are so much stronger with items and with levels. That's why Foxy, that's why you see Faces White is always looking to farm ancients, always looking to clear, clear every single stack, and they don't mind playing the defensive one. However, Brand though, they know that they are on a clock because their, their supports don't skill as good as Foxy's. That's why they are smoke again, trying to make something happen with this fresh Blink Dagger pick up by, by the X. Picked it up, but they saw Cat Chaser and they're like, yeah, we don't want any part of that. We don't know if she's got Stampede or not. I mean, she didn't at the time. She does now, but still uh, not really much out of that smoke other than maybe getting a deep ward in the enemy jungle. Obviously, they're sp spreading the map pretty well right now. They're avoiding the fight the brain is looking for. As you can see, Sleepless is farming all the way at the bottom side. And you have Honey Lisa cowering the Centaur as well. I like how they position their hero on the map because Centaur definitely is the strongest tower defender here for boxy he's he's basically cosplaying the secondary tower for his team <laughs> basically if they if brains Ball wants to go through and take this mid tower they have to go through the center first all right tps are coming bottom they're gonna look to make a move there the stampede in the bottom and then nana's just continue to farm and uh, yeah they've got the sun ray and that's gonna keep them the egg is gonna Ooh, be egg. used but it, i don't know how much damage they're gonna do the epicenter doing a little bit of work magnetize is being spread around and nana has now joined the party and Ligaya is just running for her life. She will be burned into death. And uh, it's a two for one trade in favor of Foxy. That's, that is definitely favorable for Foxy. They not only throw some TPs down, they managed to kill the puck. That was really crucial. I was surprised. I was surprised Zia didn't, didn't get the puck into the coil. Because I think that could actually help maybe give the puck a, puck a chance to survive. Invisibility. But nevertheless, that's very good, very good execution again coming out from Foxy. Good play, good play. And uh, giving them a slight advantage, but they're backed up. I mean, they took what they could and they were like, okay, we're just going to back off out of here. Um, but uh, that, that's just providing a little bit more space for Jill, who's uh, happily farming. She's top in terms of her team. Actually, if you're looking at this from net worth perspective, you know, Centaur, uh, the only one, Cat Chaser, top. But then the next three are the way of Brandy Sports.
Oh, oh. they got the Dream Coil. And uh, Metamorphosis is going to be committed by Jill. And yes, it gets snatched. And uh, they're going to kill Honey Lisa. And well, do they turn this into anything else? Hmm. Let's see. If they don't turn this into anything else, then that's actually a pretty good death from Honey Lisa because she forced the Metamorphosis, she forced the Coil, and they don't lose any tower. Oh, Cast Chaser, gotta be careful here. Oh, the shard. She's stuck in the cubby. That's a nice little play. Blink uh, call, but that was more of a for looks more than anything else, as they're not really able to do any damage against her. Man, this Vanguard who Facebook Centaur constantly staying in this mid lane. This is giving so much trouble for Brian because then without their problem metamorphosis now, not looking to damage any tower, they use that to farm engines. So that's another two minutes without the nature wave of pushing towers, and that's just another two minutes for Faces what to farm pretty freely in the jungle. All right, he's uh, she's been happily farming, but she's got MOM is looking to get Maelstrom next uh, into okay into S and Y. Is that the build you want? Mm, yeah, I would say so. I will say Maelstrom is definitely the item that she needs to get so that she can get the, the same sparring speed as the Terror Blade. Oh, stampede Ooh, the hex. They got the stampede and the nice little uh, the serpent ward trap. They got her locked in the sunray as well. And Miri's gonna get burned to crisp. And Sleepless will secure that kill though. Another great cash coming up from the for the trial of the Foxy. Last time around, the, they cute they cute the part at the bottom of the site with the same way, and they do it again this time. And that's just so much space for the Centaur and Faces One to just farm because. They are happily just doing their job. Centaur defending tower all the way. Faces swipe farming all the way. And the catching job is just so well done by the tri uh, trial of Foxy Gaming. The, tr the other two cores have no pressure at all to make stuff happen in a bad way. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, they're consistently farming Vanguard, Hood on Axe, Azalea, as well as the Blink. But uh, I, I guess, when do you start looking to make moves? as uh, Brenny Sports. Honestly, I'm not sure, man. They have no meta. Again, they, they have got mecha in 20 seconds. Can they make a move on Faces White here? Okay, Dream Quill, they're gonna commit for this. The roll is just short. It's not enough. Gets kicked out, though. Gets stunned there. It's gonna take a lot of damage, but the TPs are on point. Chrono's there. They got Lagaya, and they're gonna focus on this. And the Sunray, this is the combination. Azalea with a nice little blink call, but it might be too much. She's not taking enough. She goes down. That's three for nothing. And Foxy Gaming have taken control of this game. And it looks like Gil, it was like, all right, I'm out. TP's away. Yeah, they did not have enough damage from the face as well, unfortunately. And that was a good turnaround, Chronosphere as well. Unfortunately, his Zaya bling into the Chrono and instantly get Epicenter and Boros striked by Nengen. So that's the Wombo combo coming out from Foxy. They need they needed someone to be baiting the fights to make the fights happen. And once again, this time Faces White was the guy. She did not die. And they managed to turn turn the team fight around. And that's the biggest strength of Foxy's gaming draft. The counter initiation part. It's just so strong. It's so strong. I mean, you think that you got Faceless Void, you got a little bit of a jump on him with the Dream Coil, but yeah, you kick him away and everything like that. But then the, the help was there, the tower was just too close, everybody was able to TP, and then you chrono on top of that, and Nana, it's like the easiest kill of her life. Uh, and it looks like Shaman's been left for dead. Oh, okay. The egg is gonna be used, and that's gonna actually scurry them away. Magnetize is gonna be used, they have the Yules on. Ningen is looking to just fight this. They do have the egg, it does crack. And it looks like Lagaya goes in, goes to the roll, misses on that one. She goes for the silence, at least for now. They got the kick on Honey Lisa, who Phoenix dives away, and the tall was made, but Honey Lisa too fast. Oh, everyone was on the same page by Foxy Gaming. They know that it was a good ink, but they do not have enough damage to fight this after all. So they calmly all retreated to get together. Everyone's on the same page. No one tries to go back in to, to turn the team fight around. So that was really good. They lost the mid tower for this though, but as long as their heroes are alive, they should be pretty okay with this. It's a 90 minute. They hold their mid tower for 90 minutes against the tower base. That's not That's not bad at all. All right, but Jill still, yeah, I mean, against the TB or whatever, but has SNY, Scotty up next. I mean, they're starting to move up. Oh, Cat Chaser walks up blind, gets silenced, Walrus punched, and the Sun Ray just keeping her alive, and they do a little bit of burn. Dream Coil she gets kicked away, and it finally goes down. That's for one. They have it on Sleepless as well, and they're going to take him down as well. Honey Lisa has the Phoenix dive to the high ground. Ningen is nearby, but I don't think they want to commit with this, especially since Nana did not have Chrono. Oh, that's a painful, that's a painful misplay coming up from Foxy. 
Santa Santa thought he, he was she was strong enough, but apparently there was five men from Brandy Sport. Fortunately, Metamorphosis is down, so they don't get to translate this into the Roshan. So Foxy Gaming, they get to just be patient, find another round of attack for themselves. Now that their ultimates are all up, very soon, they, this is probably where finally Fox Gaming would try to make a smoke play and be offensive for the first time in this game. Because their timings are finally up right now. Okay, the ults are up. But okay, they're getting, they're winning team fights, Brenny Sports that is. But the thing is, is that they're not converting this into any sort of tower damage, right? Towers mm -hmm. or any sort of objective based Dota, right? And that, that, that worries me because, I mean, yeah, you have a Terra Blade who will eventually carry you. As I, I see the Terra Blade? Uh, they see it. And they do have the Burl Strike. They found it. And uh, they're going to look to go for this. They got the destroy. Okay, Dilation as well. And Jill, really no chance. Just walking in. Nice smoke there. The only ultimate they used here was Epicenter, so they don't have any windows to not fight at all. So this is the biggest thing of Foxy. If they could find a successful pickup, not using all their ultimates, that would be such a good win because now, Brandy Spot, they don't have any timings at all because the Supernova is still up, the Chronos is still available. It's so hard for Brand to fight into to fight into Foxy. I think for Brand this game, they could not look for any 5 on 5 engagement. They need to shy away from that, try to get as many pickups they as they can and lead that and turn that into objective taking. Yeah, but but again, it's coming down to like you had that moment, you had that opportunity, and you didn't take advantage of it. Now you've backed up and let them get their alts, and then make it more difficult again. So it's one of those things where okay, you know, I know that epicenter has been used, but you know what I mean. Like, can we really fight? Now we have to look for some sort of attack just to kind of bait things out, disengage again, make sure everything's on cooldown, and again look for that opening to hopefully win out a team fight or a tower. Absolutely. Oh, this is going to be hard. When Centaur gets the type of insight, everything is going to look even harder from Brand Inspire because the heroes, they both us spirit and Toss, they offer a lot of disables. But at this point, might not give a lot of, uh, might not give a lot of damage. After all, once the levels on Foxy are up, Honey Lisa, gotta be careful here. I'm gonna dive got... away. Yeah, she should be fine. Just doing do a little bit of scouting, look at dewarding and whatnot, um, and she's out of there. But. <clears throat> 2k net worth lead this is one of those moments where who's winning this game who really wants it i'm probably uh, i'm probably gonna say foxy is winning the game for for now because if you look at brands their net worth the two supports are already behind of the two support of foxy because we talk about the scalability they are not as good as foxy's that's why they want to be forcing something to happen get smoked in the triangle drop a really deep ops but do not find anyone Oh, yeah, they don't find anything, but the blink forward, Miri going in, Dream Coil is instantly hexed, here comes Nana, but she actually gets stunned, not able to get the Chrono, there we go, but it's on the backside and it only catches Miri, she does go down, so they got one for one, and it's at the cost of Sleepless, not a bad trade thus far, they want Azalea, they're gonna look to go for this, she gets a nice little call here, but that's, she's burning to the sun, and she will go down in the end, it's two for one, and this is looking bad, Gia looking to go down as well, and it's a double kill going the way of Ningen, and it's a three for one so far, what a great fight for Foxy. That was so smart for Foxy, they knew that them, there's a possibility that Bram would be wrapping around, that's why they all stay in the at the low ground, that Bram is what had no vision at all, and they, the brands feel like you know they were they have this uh, they have this urgency that they need to make something. That's why they went for this very suboptimal or straight up bad initiation, and they just screwed up. So that was again Foxy just really utilizing their counter initiation strength Radiance to bait brands into tower. very bad fights, and then they turn it around. And, and, and to add on to that, I feel like the, the fights, they were like trying to force it. It's like, yeah, we smoked, we went in the jungle, we went into the triangle, we tried to find them, we didn't find anything. And so we're like, okay, we're going to go under and dive under the T1, which is a terrible idea if you think about it, considering everybody could just TP in and everybody's, you know, counter initiation is this team's strength. This is definitely not a fight you want to take. So the fights that the two big ones thus far, the bottom T1 and that one, have just been disastrous for Brandy Sports. Absolutely. Die. All right, now they do have themselves a timing that most of the ultimates are down on Foxy's side. Do they want to use this metamorphosis to force the Roshan? I kind of think that they have to do it because the longer they, the longer they stay inactive, the better it is for Foxy because they're just waiting for their ultimates to be up and not losing anything at, in the process. 
Uh, it's a perfect opportunity. They gotta force something. But again, the cooldowns are already back up. Um, and uh, as we can see, Ningand is actually 8, 0, and 7. Ooh. What a nightmare right now for Brandy's Sport. Yeah, Ningen also very close to the BKB now. Now that she is as strong, once the BKB is up, she's as strong as the Centaur. She can so go as more uh, as much initiation coming up from Bren as the Centaur. All of a sudden, oh, catch Chaser! Oh, okay. Jump on the mid lane. Very tanky. They got the hex. And here we go. Stampede is going to be used offensively. The Sun Ray is going to be used as well. The kick in and uh, just kind of slowing things out. Nigan is now here. They do need to be careful about that. The Ligaya actually goes in, gets the magnetized. The egg is on the back end of this one. Hazelia is looking to get very low. She does go down in the end. She dies to the caustic Ooh. finale. Gia goes down as well. And Nigan is on a godlike streak. And the courier runs away saying, hey, I can't deliver this package. Oh, they are making a move on Mary. Can catch her. Does it get a stun? Uh, does get the stun. Oh, and they're ah! on that. The patience. The pump fake cat chaser just being able to outclass Miri on that one. Super <laughs> smart play. What a play. It's the small things in Dota, man. The small things. Wow. I, I couldn't believe that workout, man. She blinks in, pump fake three eyes, like three times. It's like Kobe Bryant jab step, uh, like jab step, right? Jab step you three <laughs> times and then make a shot. I couldn't believe she got the stun there. Wow, what a play, Cat Chaser. And that was just in time for Shaman to come in, comes down for the force again TP and get a hex on the park. That was so well timed. Very well played there. And through that all, I mean, the cores, the wards are going to be placed and it's going to force Radiant the initiation onto the T2, the but it looks like they're going to trade for Roche. Radiant's Not a bad trade at the end of the day, assuming Jill can take this down very quickly. All right, they absolutely have to make this Roshan work. There's tag team, so should be able to take this down pretty fast. Everyone's tipping in, tipping in though. There's a smoke out faces while running in. Oh, it's not going fast enough. Nana is in position, does have Chrono if they want to go. The guy is around, they're going to be spread out. Honey Lisa's going to scout this out, and the Chrono goes in, and they're going to look to focus this. They go right to Gia, Gia goes down. That's going to be the first one. The Sun Ray is going to be used as well. Jill is looking to fight this one, but the epicenter from downtown. Jill thunders away, tries to go for Centaur. The Ligaya is trying to do as much as possible. The Dream Coil is now here. They're looking to fight this. Roche is down. Jill is looking to go down, and that's it with Roshan. And they end up snatching that one away and buy back from Gia, but this is looking awesome. Up and up for Foxy Gaming. Oh my god. This is disastrous fight after disastrous fight coming up from Brandy Sports. I think this is just a snowballing effect, right? Because they made a couple of they make a couple of bad decisions early on. And I kind of feel like they have to go for this YOLO kind of play or super risky kind of play to salvage up their mistakes early on. And they just get getting punished over and over again by Foxy Gaming that is making better decisions. Foxy, they are playing out of their mind right now. I mean, it comes back to where the vision was, right? I mean, they suspected Roshan, Roshan was going to be gone on, right? But the thing is that Nana was able to slowly creep down that entrance ramp, right? If they had vision there, they probably would have backed off and they would have played things smart. But Brandy Sports completely blind, going for this YOLO play, like you said, and just putting themselves in a bad, bad position. Yeah, I think someone have to stand up on the high ground to just block any potential smoke coming out from Foxy. They just have to throw their body in and yeah, she bought back. She's gonna be okay. But anyway, this is 9k goalie already for Foxy games, Foxy's gaming. The the thing about Foxy is that even if they're back, even if they're down 9k with their intensive line team fight lineup, they can still turn things around even if they are down 9k. And now that they are up 10k. How are you going to fight against this perfectly team, perfectly drafted team fight lineup if they are playing it perfectly? They kind of have to hope that Foxy will make some disastrous mistake for them to come back into this game. I mean, Jill is doing what she can. She's top of the net worth, but the next three cores from Foxy are two, three, four. Right? Ningand is playing out of her mind. Centaur, Cat Chaser as well. I mean, and Nana has just been like, hey, my cores are playing so amazingly that I really don't have as much pressure as I should as a position one. So, I mean, this team is really gelling well. You're seeing just how advanced, like, what sort of great sort of synergy they have, not only with the draft, but with their play style. They've been on point throughout the day. Throughout the day, yeah. Especially the Medusa game. Um... On the last one, you can tell everyone knows how their winning condition is. Everyone has this the same vision of how the team fight is gonna play it out, and they just everyone is doing their job perfectly. 
Agreed. Agreed. And it looks like it's going to be day now. 30 minutes in. 8K net worth lead. I mean, what does Brandy Sports need to do other than get, you know, Gil gets fat, Gil ends the game? I guess they have to start speed pushing right now. They have to they have to give enough time for Terrible to get as much item as, as he could. They do have pretty good heroes to, 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 to clear wave. They can park. They can always be speed pushing the side lanes with the help of the Eon Dis. He's not gonna. She's not so exposed to any gangs anymore with the Eon Dis. But the only thing is Axe though. I feel like there's no place for the Axe anymore in this game. She's not as tanky anymore. She does not. Oh okay. wow, Sleepless is going for the solo play. Okay, Nigan is now coming in. Got the wards in. Burl Strike. Nigan is perfectly timed. Epicenter is now going to be channeled and charged. And it goes right in. And she doesn't even get the Sunder off. Not like, I don't think she really had a chance. But that's going to be it. Gia goes down as well. Stampede is going to be used offensively. And they want, they're hunting. The Gaia gets the kick and the roll away. A little cheeky play out of the egg. She should be fine. Oh, he's out here. Not they got fine. the hook stop, and it looks like the sun ray as well. Nigan is just kind of body blocking, turns her into a sheep, wait for the burl strike off cooldown, and Foxy Gaming, they're styling. They're styling, their actions happening multiple multiple uh, locations. Do you see how they orchestrate the f kill on Terror Blade? Sleepless, use all the rounds of her disable and then blink out to hide from the Terror Blade so she does not get a target to Sunder because Ningen was hiding in the Sandstorm. And then they finish him off whilst uh, trapping her in the in the Super Wars. Oh, now they go in more. Miri, they're gonna go for Lagaya and she dies as well. Miri instantly buys back, but for what? One versus five, don't think you have much of a choice. This is gonna be mid rax at least. Oh, this is just Foxy getting playing this game so clean, executing so well, and the spell usage are amazing coming out from them. All the chains done are coming in, you know, all the cowering and coordinations were so on point. Now they are just gonna play well, very disciplined, uh, disciplinedly get the mini racks, get out, wait for the second Rosha to be up, control the triangle, and maybe they sh and this is a seems like Bram will want to be. Yolo smoking out very soon. That's why Foxy Gaming they are here. Oh, the for the Chaser goes in. Stampede is now going to be used. Nana's looking to fight this. They go right to Miri. That's a dieback for her. The snowball forward, and they were trying to go for the save, but now Gia's in a bad spot. No, has no one to save but her, and she will die as well. And this is looking from bad to worse. This is not looking good for Brandy Sports. <laughs> Brandy Sports, they try to regain the. The, the triangle vision, but Foxy's gaming, they were all ready for that. They have for superior vision, they have the heroes to stay there to protect the visions. That's why when Jazz and Puck went up, they instantly make a move on them, and the chain stun was like we said. And the entire game, the chain stun were so on point. Are under attack. Just on point. I mean, they have the stuns that you talked Radiant about, they have like the team fight, fight. just. It's very difficult, and like, their, your death timer is almost like their cooldown timer for their ult, right? So like, oh, you're alive? Okay, now I got my ult again. And uh, now Radiant they're gonna focus the bottom racks here. You'd be a free racks for them. Without a park, I don't... There's really not a solid way for them to engage this. Look at Ninka, she's constantly channeling and de-channeling the, the epicenter, ready for the counter station. And now with two racks, Lead and the 20k go lead Foxy. They are playing this calmly. They want to wait for Roshan, or maybe hanging around protecting this triangle would be a way for them to close out the game cleanly as well. For Brand, they will have to calm down. They have to find a perfect initiation for themselves. But they can they though? I mean, I, I've seen you know uh, members of Foxy play before, and I don't think I've ever seen them so disciplined at this point. Like the fact that they're disengaged, they saw the respawn timers, they knew exactly when they needed to leave. I mean, you talked about you know taking the melee mid racks and then just running away when everybody was up again. Um, but I, I think the older version of this team would not have done a move. They would have continued to go for that that range racks and just kind of been like, oh, we need to finish this out. But this is a super smart team. They've learned from their mistakes in past FSL, you know, uh, tournaments. And they've gotten to this high level right now where they're making incredibly good decisions. And here we go. This is going to be the Dream Coil. They've got the Chrono on top of this, but Dill is actually doing some work. Metamorphosis, and they're focusing right on this. And Nana's kind of by herself. 
She gets Walrus Punch, and she's trying to just time lock most of that damage away. The egg is going to be used on the back end. Gil actually looks to turn this and fight. Sleepless goes down. The egg gets popped. Cezelia is so low, looking to fight this, and they're focusing down on Nana, who tries to time lock it away. Not enough. Cat Chaser is going to have to run for her life now. And this is uh, the comeback fight that Brandy Sports really needed as they're chasing Cat Chaser. That, if there's ever a Custer Curse, this is absolutely one. You were, yep. <laughs> I was listening to you praising, praising Foxy Gaming <laughs> as I see the fireman smoke of Brand slowly get close to Foxy Gaming and then they make a move. Unfortunately, they, they make a move on Sand King. Um, Nana tried to save him, but he chronos on top of the Sand King and the Axe, and that was just a free reign of damage for Triple to be pumped into the chrono on the Sand King. And unfortunately, Sand King bought back instantly. Were not was not able to be strong enough to turn the fight around. So that was a successful YOLO smoke by Brains, but that gave them some breathing room. Unfortunately, Roshan... Oh, wait, Roshan is up. Roshan is up. But okay, this is exactly why I don't compliment people, okay? <laughs> this is why I'm not nice to people, right? Okay. Stuff like that happens and it get, I get pie thrown on my face right away. Literally seconds when I was complimenting you and I don't do that often. <laughs> That, that kind of stuff, they make stupid mistakes like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was more like Brand out playing Foxy, though, because Foxy definitely did not see that coming. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the smoke I mean, route that Brand is about was perfect there. I mean, they thought they were strong, but I felt like once, uh, you know, the Chrono dropped and then, you know, uh, Heroes on their team. Okay, here we go. The Stampede, they found Gia, who's going to have to snowball just to keep herself alive, at least for now, but I don't think there's any way she can kind of survive this as she gets a double edge to death. Mm. She has buyback. Now I think Foxy Gaming, they should be looking to scout out the Roshan. At least someone needs to go into the Roshan pit to check whether, are, whether or not it's attack. up. They should be able to bring this Roshan down pretty easily now that all their outies are almost up. Let's see if they will do that. Terror Blades. Okay, Nana jumps into the Roshan pit. You start hitting the Roshan. They know that there's no meta for a while, they do not know exactly the cooldowns, but Metamorphosis is actually out for you right now. Let's see if they want to be contesting this. They don't have any vision on this play, though. Yeah, I mean, the Radiant of Scan, it, they, they, I think uh, Cat Chaser was outside of the pit. Not entirely sure if that was actually scanned or not, but okay. They do get Roshan in the end. And uh, they're going to look to just trade at least the T2 bottom, maybe, for that. Maybe this illusion will do it. It's literally a hit away. This is why he's gonna get the Agony Shard, so he has the ability to um, blink backwards if he wants to. Reverse Time Walk. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty powerful. I think I think this is actually the biggest power that anyone could have, right? To reverse time, to go back in time to um, undo something or do something. Mm -hmm. yeah, would, yeah. That be the, would that be the power that you want if, if you could choose one no. of the power from Dota? No. What no. would you want? Um, one, maybe, oh my gosh, I don't even know. What would I do? Uh, well, the stop it for it. Let me think about this. I will get in. Cat Chaser goes in and out. Uh, I think Chrono. Chronosphere. Chrono? I think yeah. Chronosphere. You like Because I would just freeze time? everybody in place and then I would just dance by myself. I wouldn't kill anybody, of course, because I'm not a killer. I'm a lover, not a killer. You should dance by yourself. <laughs> What? <laughs> Why couldn't you do that? Like you don't have to freeze everyone to do that. No, 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 no. Because then they'll outdance me, and the, you know what I mean. It's like uh, we'll have a like every time I dance in front of somebody, they have a dance off with me, and then they beat me, and I feel bad, and I cry a little bit. Oh, I see. It's okay, man. <laughs> if you are ever with me, right? Yeah, no, I, I would never outdance anyone, so don't worry about that. All right. I would okay. always be the yeah the worst dancer in a in a pool. All right, we'll have a dance off one day. All right, we'll we'll uh we'll challenge. We'll challenge each other of who's the worst dancer. <laughs> uh, hopefully okay. one day. Hopefully one day. Yes, yes, hopefully. Uh, nonetheless, 16k net worth lead. I mean, 32-17 right now. I mean, they've got full map control, and it looks like they're going to slowly start the siege. They got the wards to kind of start things off. Oh, the blink forward. They actually missed the stop, though. Um, but they're going to focus Radiant's on this T3 top. top. Glyph is now going to be used. Radiant's top tower is under Slow siege coming out from Foxy. Oh, the sun rays doing some work. The caller not Nana don't care. Here's the epicenter. That's gonna do some work. 
and Hazalia goes down. Not as tanky as you wanted, but Jill with the Metamorphosis doing some work. Nana's going to time walk most of that away. And she's uh, about half life already, but she should be fine. She's going to get earned here. And they just cat chasers like, okay, you hit me. I don't really care. I'm just going to go for the practice. Hizaya, she did not have fireback though. Oh, cat chaser oh. goes in, he finds him a nice three man chrono. And a four man if you count your own centaur. But you're focusing on Jill, but not doing a whole lot of damage. She actually is looking to fight this. And she's getting bashed, she's getting hexed. And she's looking to fight this one. She's getting shackled again, and she's being completely controlled. Gia has to buy back. She needs to come in. Miri goes down. That's a disaster right there. Jill is looking to fight this. Try to focus it on somebody, but Nana has Aegis, and I don't think that that's the one you want to go on right now. Oh, that's Mega Crips now. That's Supernova plus Sun Ray. That's the power of the Shard of Phoenix. That does so much damage. Oh, a Spirit Nagaya. She's dead. No real chance there. Well, response, and this is just they're throwing everything out. This I like the fact that they're you know fighting to the end here, but this is looking to be the end, and it's very very soon. Jill gets stunned again. No real chance to get away. Mind you, this is only game one, so if anything, you're looking to just kind of hey shrug this one off. Not much we can do, and they tap out now, and we're gonna go into a game two. Oh, once again, like Cat Chaser say, is is a storm. Like every single move coming out from. Granny Sport early game was successfully repelled by Foxy's Gaming amazing positioning and amazing counter initiation. They played their drop perfectly. They have perfect idea on how to carry out the team fight that they needed to. They need oh they will always need someone to be tanking in front to survive the in initial attack from Brandy Sport. They, and they always have the one guy to do that. And counter initiation are always on point. They change that are on point. Everything is so well done by Apostle Gaming. I think this is a game that Brain Sport, they don't have to be upset themselves because I do feel like this is just simply Foxy Gaming playing on another level. Yeah, another level. But here's the thing. If you're playing against a team that's on another level and you're the best of three, what do you do, right? You have no other chance, but you need to match up and you need to rise up to that level to compete in this tournament. Yeah, I think they might want to be bringing back their Dusa strat or the Sanking plus AA threat. Because if, if you notice, Foxy Gaming, they banned out Mirana first at first. So to get rid or the, or to get rid of their Sanking Mirana AA trial, right? So they forced Brain to go into a different style, which is to open the Earth Spirit and Park that we have not seen before in this tournament by the Brain Yeah. So this is a brand new strategy coming from them. And Foxy Gaming, this is such a comfortable pick for themselves. And I think that definitely gives them a lot of difference in terms of comfortability. Mm -hmm. they, they, they seem very comfortable. Mind you, I've seen Lagaya on Earth Spirit before. She does know the hero. But, I mean, in this tournament, we haven't seen much of it. So, yeah, I understand why you probably shouldn't be bringing out new strats at the, you know, the grand finals of a tournament. But I expect them to be like, hey, just, you know, let's take a timeout. Let's take a breather. Let's figure out what we did wrong. And let's go to our comfort hero so that we're better prepared for game two, which will be coming up very, very soon. My name is Holler. This is Arthur. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to FSL Dota 2 Open. My name is Holler and uh, with me is Arthur. And we just saw a pretty smashing game by Foxy Gaming in game one. What were your thoughts on that one? Well, that was just a very clean Dota coming out from Foxy. Really amazing stuff as well. Very impressive, but very impressed by them. The, the amount of um, execution that they did, very disciplined overall in the game as well. I hoped Brain Sport is not too beaten down by that because that was just completely Foxy playing ahead of them. So hopefully... Um, Brainspot would bring something better in the, into the game because it does feel like the last series was a bit of the trying because that's the new style that we haven't seen before from Brand and hopefully this time they go back to their comfort pick and give their A game because they are going to need the A game here against Foxy. I just felt like they were really overextending a lot. Like they were trying to force fights when they were just really not good fights to take. I think that they thought that we were strong. Let's just take the tempo with us and just kind of just smash them from the beginning. But like the, the fights that they took again, just, you know what I mean? Like you have to look at like risk percentage in terms of just like how, you know, what, what sort of chances do I have of winning this team fight? And almost all of them, I would say were under 50%. And as you saw, they got smashed in a lot of those things. And that kind of just snowballed. And if you're playing up against a hero, like, you know, Sand King, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, Ningen played out of her mind, but the fact that this Sand King like just wants to fight, right? So you're playing to her strengths in that sense. So just just things to note, even when you're moving forward, I think you just need to calm down, take a breather, and then just take it slow. Absolutely. This time around, though, they go for the similar kind of build here, um, kind of play style, Osprey AA, the kind of 
she just didn't want to be running into your face. And guess what? Frosty Game picks up. Sanking again for themselves and the lion, one of the better heroes in terms of counter initiating or initi initiating as well. Ten so Foxy Gaming, remaining. it seems like they are going back to the same style as Game One and Bram yeah, and Brand as well. Remaining. So I, I think uh, Foxy Gaming chose the Sand King for the lols, right? Be like, oh, this hero like traumatized you last game. Let's bring it right back into you, and until you have an answer for it, I'm gonna continue to push this this hero in your face. Absolutely. Not only that, right? If you guys remember, Brand is what they like their Sand King plus AA combination as well. So they are kind of banning out the Mirana, snatch the Sand King away from Brand, so taking away their best weapon and play against themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, I think it's, I mean, they have a better out. I think AA does kind of a good job of kind of at least the Ice Blast kind of messes with Sand King because you don't want to stay static for too long. But um, the Dragon Knight pick here, your thoughts on this one, especially into Sand King and Lion? Yeah, that's pretty okay. Last time around, they did not have a hero that can, um, that, that is able to ta be tanky enough to soak up initiation so mm -hmm. dk definitely is the kind of Five hero besides that dk can also be the one initiating for the team plus the it's a it's a very good um spell to connect for the ice plus so i like i like the combination here it's a flex pick as well can go to mid or off lane and normally people counter the dragon knight with the team Bersaw, mm -hmm. but because of the presence of the aa it's very hard for fox gaming to pick up the team of themselves so i think it's okay for them to open up the dk just like that Okay, okay. All right, but then what do you counter here as Foxy Gaming? I mean, you you talked about the Timber obviously not being a good pick because the AA, but uh, what what's next? Well, I will say if Elder Titan is a pool, Elder Titan would be a pretty good pick here for Foxy Gaming. Elder Titan, very popular right now in the current meta in um, high tier Dota. Yeah. And then because, you know, simply because the Aura is just very good in, in just removing any armor from the, the, the enemy hero. So that really amplifies the set the magical damage especially for second and lion i think other time it would be a great pick if they do play it they go for the same pick phoenix for honey lisa one of the heroes that can also just um kill dragonite pretty easily with the sun rake percentage damage no matter how strong dragonite gets he's gonna be taking more damage as he becomes stronger all right, but also Honey Lisa used it. I mean, it's a two-way thing in the sense of just not only the damage, but the heal as well. Mm -hmm. But AA's Ice Five Blast will be on, remaining. hopefully on point to kind of negate that piece. So um, it's definitely not as strong as it was in game one. Um, but I do, I, I mean, if you're comfortable on the hero, this is one of those moments where you have a chance to close it out. This is your chance to win 300 SGD if you win first place. So you might as well go all in in the sense of, hey, this is my comfort hero. I'm going to go with it. Dia yeah, for sure. Back. They go for Juggernaut, one of the heroes that can counter the Phasers, uh, counter the Phoenix, and they go back for the Phasers White once again. All right, so the only difference in the last one is the Lion and the Centaur from last time, right? It looks mm -hmm. like Foxy's like, all right, you, you haven't banned Dia any of the heroes, no back. respect whatsoever, Bren. So I'm just going to pick the same ones, and I'm going to hopefully just run it at you the same way I did last time. Yeah, I feel like it's exactly the same style from both sides. Foxy, they are... They are the one playing defensively. They are the one waiting for Banks to make a bigger move, which is why it remaining. creates a lot of tension and pressure for Banks. But because they know that Five whatever move remaining. they are they are making, they have to make it perfect. They have to make sure that they jump and kill someone instantly. They have the Ice Blast this time to build, build someone fast. Uh, but still, Ice Blast is the only, only burst damage right now for Brains, but they might need more so that they can just clean up fights even faster. Something Radiant like Quad would be good. Back. Something like a Lina would be good if they want to put the DK on the offlane, which is pretty okay. Um, considering it will be up against Phoenix and Faces White, one of the most defensive lanes out there. I think DK, if Dio they want to switch three, it could work pretty nicely. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll have to see. And that, that gives the flexibility, right? And uh, But, I mean, okay. The last game, yes, there are almost... Foxy Gaming are picking almost the same heroes. But the AA pick, and I think GL will be playing that one. I think that that is a completely different ball game, right? You chrono the person. Yeah, you've got Ice Blast on top. Ten you can't even time walk that off. Phoenix Heal. Like, it, it's negating a lot of what they want to do, right? Five so already they're remaining. putting themselves in a much better position than mm -hmm. they were in the last game. Yeah, that's for sure. That is for sure. So let's see what Fossil Gaming is going to pick here to round out their draft. Are they putting the Sand King on the mid lane or on the off lane? We'll see. Probably no. Probably not wanting the Sand King uh, on the off lane because it's not so very fantastic against the Jaguar plus A. They probably mm -hmm. want something like uh, 
Mm. Slada is still in the pool if they want to. They go for tight under. That's pretty that's pretty okay as well. Alright, even so more team fight. Like, yeah, team fight galore with the ravage. How are you gonna deal with this? And the chrono, <laughs> the egg, uh epicenter just on top. And I mean Nigan is like I'm completely styling i feel 100 percent comfortable sand king first pick it i don't really care what they bring at me but is dk the remain. answer or are they gonna have to pick a mid here brandy sports that is honestly i feel like they have to pick a mid here i don't see any off laner right now that can be the gold shot pick for brand or or drastically change things up mm -hmm. i feel like they need a mid player uh, they, they need somewhat of another source of winning condition because mm -hmm. right now they're winning really condition only Juggernaut and he's where as close to the face as white Chronosphere. They might need to go for something like uh mm, like uh all right. all right, they do go for tiny. It's an okay hero, pretty good against Lion and Phoenix for, for you to jump to the back line to instantly kill the two supports off. It's a it's a kind of burst damage as well. Mm -hmm. But I don't see Tiny going late game into Fox's gaming draft though. It's, yeah. not like eight, it's not an eight. It's not an eight hitter. It mm -hmm. doesn't really do anything to face as well at the late game, and mm -hmm. for sure, they are, Tiny is not kidding this tanking or tight hunter at all too. So as long as the lion and Phoenix could survive the burst coming out from Tiny, then Tiny would be struggling a lot in the late game to find a way to do damage. Actually, you brought up a great point. I mean, I don't think. I mean, Juggernaut is of course great against the egg, but. Not everyone else. They're kind of slower, you know, melee oriented and like Earth Spirit's terrible, tiny, you mentioned it. Dragon Knight kind of okay, but like, you know what I mean? Even AA, his snowballs are kind of slow, right? So I, I feel like this is a pretty big hole that they need to deal with. And uh, walking into a chrono ravage potential, like how do you, how do you lock these guys down? I have no idea. I feel like Fossey, once again, they go for this team fight intensive lineup that... <laughs> It's just very well drafted around the Faces Void because this is what Faces Void will want to be. No, he wants a lineup that can he can fight when Chrono is down. So every not everything is highly reliant on him, and this is definitely the style for the Faces Void to shine. Because even though Chrono is down, they can still play with the deep disable coming up from Sanking and Lion, and also Ravage will be another soft source uh, source of AOE disable that so that. He does not have so much pressure on landing a perfect chronosphere. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna make it easier, Prepare and uh, it's battle. always nice to have the green old watermelon on your side because uh, Ravage is always fun to play around with. But okay, Brenny Sports, they really need to change it up. I feel like even going into this one, and Foxy have shown time and time again that team fight alts. This is our style, five man in it. We're gonna go. But Brenny Sports again, they're going for a little bit different. Uh, you know, hopefully they can kind of burst out things and like. Get the right pickoffs to just make these team fights work to their advantage. Mm. They might have to snowball this game really hard with their draft. Because they if they could get a snowball up with the early dagger on Tiny and DK, they can actually keep setting up uh, fights over fights, abusing the window of the uh, Foxy's high high cooldown on their ultimate. So if they could do that, they, I, I can see them taking down the game. Because Juggernaut is a hero that can pressure tower early it's also a hero that can take Russian pretty easily with the with the healing ward so yeah this yeah. time around the ability to take down towers is definitely better than last time okay all right they're gearing in to, at least to the rune here and they do start spotting him uh, sleepless is going to make their way across and it looks like they've got a bit of a numbers advantage at least uh a no Four versus uh, four, and uh, Cat Chaser's just gonna back up. First bite, the roll in. They're gonna go for this one. Nigan actually uh, does not pick it up. The guy with fast fingers takes the rune. Yeah, it's gonna be three bounty runes to the way of Brandy's part. That's pretty good. Mary gets the observer, gets the dewar as well, and the entire <laughs> experience all to himself. And he's already a quarter ahead of Nigan here. That's pretty massive. It's a good start, definitely. Um, all right, so Ningen here versus uh, the Sand King versus Miri's Tiny. Who do you give the edge to? Mm, I'll say once again, it's a pretty trade farm lane. It's pretty 50-50 in terms of drop farm. But I'll say Tiny would be able to... Actually, both sides have some ways to cheat. Do some oh, cheap harassment. This spin. This is off of the roll in from Legaya, which is on point. Cat Chaser taking a ton of damage. Gets body blocked. He has nowhere to go. Decides to fight and gives up first blood. Geo will take first one. First blood. Mm. This is a style of Brandy Sport. Whenever they have the AA, they'll always go for this early 
uh, first bird attempt. I remember them doing this with the A uh, task as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, some, something we have seen yesterday, definitely not something that is unfamiliar from Brand. Yeah, and that, that draft was much better. That really helped out with uh, Tusk in, in the sense of they had like, uh, you know, a little bit of combination. The tri, the tri lane was there and they, they kind of set up Tusk for a lot of success. I think in the last game, it was kind of underwhelming. We didn't see the the great performance that we've, we've known from the Tusk brand new sports players. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like last game, they were not ready for Foxy's gaming. Mm -hmm. They were a little bit, and mm, maybe in a sense, underestimated Foxy gaming. Yeah. Well, and again, like Tri Lane is not gonna stop. The league guy is still here. Oh, well, the roll in on the bottom, and they're gonna go look to go. And Cat Chaser is getting body blocked a little bit, but uh, Legaya not really being able to do too much damage, but just getting in the way more than anything else. Mm, top lane is all complete okay for his eye. His level three is instead actually forcing the entire lane into Nana. Now, and Nana is only level one. Oh, this is so sad. Oh, it finally levels up there. Congratulations to Nana hitting level two. Oh, all right. And it looks like she's, uh, Miri's going to pick up the bottle and the water rune there. Um, and Honey Lisa is now here. Nana called for reinforcements. Oh my god, look at how low how, how low Nana is. He's actually struggling against this solo, uh, solo Dragon Knight. Oh, just barely misses. No actual sentry. Uh, but yeah, Nana just really having a hard time against this Dragonite who's soloing um, the lane. Two versus one and, you know, Azalea don't care. Yeah, he does not care at all. David strong? David no care. <laughs> oh, her spike. Jill's a little low, does need to be careful. Gia throws out the snowball and uh, slick this little back up here. And they just picked up another Bracer for himself. So, Dava Bracer, not something that we have seen a lot of time. I'm actually quite surprised that he spent the goal on the Bracer instead of another uh, boost of speed to get away from the from the Blade Fury. So he's just planning to tank, tank everything up like a man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bracer, Bracer, okay, so uh, Sleepless here just trying to pull. Catches here just getting in the way and making sure that uh, Jia can't actually get to the creep wave. But that courier is running. Okay, it was a little close. Uh, Gia was looking for the pickoff. Doesn't need to be careful. I think she's baiting for Ligaya, who they don't know is in the vicinity. Roll in. Misses. And just short, Cat is going to be slowed down here. The Earth Spike has actually stopped Jill from getting in. And uh, Jill decides to be like, hey, I just want I, I just want creeps. Mm, they're suffering quite a bit, actually. If you look at level-wise, Tanta, even though he has died once, but he's almost the same level um, in terms of experience against the job. Oh, wait, Cat Chaser. Oh, the spin. Jill and Cat Chaser, they're looking to fight this one. Jill is actually low as well. The Hex. Ooh. Cat Chaser gets the kill on that one. Kills. Oh, Jill. Oh, not like this. That Earth Spike was on point by Sleepless. Wow, that was so well played. Oh, they want to go for more Degaia. Trying to do some body pop. Oh, Kicks yeah. and Lion back. Yeah, she has to walk the other way or else she would have been frozen in place. Nice little cheeky play by Ligaya, but I think Sleepless will get away in the end. She's she's gonna taunt her way out. Uh, <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. She's got, even gonna kill Korea as well. Ah. Ooh, this is a slap in the face, man. This is a slap in the face. Oh gosh. Not only do you get the kill or you walk away, but you get the courier, you survive. On the other hand, though, I mean, if we're looking at the top three in terms of last hits, Brandy Spore's still on top, okay? It's just that Nana, on the other hand, has been struggling a little bit, not have that free farm that she really wants. Yeah, she went for this over Wanna, trying to force the DK out of the lane. But, I mean, DK just being DK, right? Level 5, 2 points on Dragon Blood, there's really no way. Oh my god, Nana? Uh, She's getting a bit scary. Yeah, it's a little low. And, I mean, the creeps are actually doing some damage to Nana. She needs to be a little bit careful. I don't even think she has a re. I mean, she's got a two charge stick which isn't great. Honey Lisa, like, literally just, like, throwing out these fireballs, but not really able to do much damage against Azalea, who's very tanky. We haven't talked much about mid lane, but if you look at the CS, 28 on Tiny against the 19 on Sanking. It seems like Tiny has gotten herself a pretty favorite lead here. Like, having higher base damage definitely helps there. Alright, Sleepless with another... Oh, so low has to stick. Probably another shot away. The gush is going to be used. It looks like they turned it around. And the neutral kill killed Gia. So the outplay there. 
She ends up getting the kill on Lion and she dies to the neutral creep. Very well played. Oh my god, the, the hell bear was a very responsible radiant creep, I would say. She just casually smash time to collapse the lion get the lion low enough for it for jia to kill and then the the creeps finish off jia so that was one hell of a trade for for brain sports <laughs> <laughs> what is what a great play there i mean sometimes you get lucky and uh it, it pays off like that but jia is now going to be in the mid lane uh, doing a little bit of zoning for miri tps are coming all the pearl strike Teammates are here, sleepless, but she gets tossed back. Ningen, that is. Oh, but the nice roll in by Ligaya, and they've got Ningen. She has to fairy fire, at least for the first one. She does get killed. Nice kick out there. Miri will secure that one. Sleepless is now running for her life. She's running under the tower. They're forcing this one. Nice two man earth spike, and Sleepless is looking to juke, but the avalanche is on point. The courier will give away her position. Ligaya gone. Woof. Very far left. That was uh, nowhere to be seen. Yeah, not only they managed to punish the Sanking, they also devoured another Ops. On the on this main on this mid lane, that's uh, that's two observer on the mid lane being dewarded by Brainsport in seven minutes. So once again, there is a lot of vision advantage here by Brainsport. Very well done. Hold it. They do find it. Nana they kick in with Miri. Just the stuns are on point. Very nice gank. Yeah, this time around, this is a much better start for Grammy. So they want to go for more Honey Lisa. Dragon form, roll in. It does from long range. Honey Lisa, no real chance, even if you Phoenix dove out over there. Well, much, much better start from Brand this time. Gil is having a pretty good time at the bottom side, even though with one death, he's having the most CS right now among all the cores. And Jia is already level 6, Holler. This is. What? Ice Blast Brady in 8 minutes. Dyer's what? Wait, wait, wait. What did she do? How did she get so... How did she get her LXP? She was like rotating. She was like moving around. What did she yeah, do? She, she, was in, she was involved in 4 kills. I think that's why. And also the the solo kill. I think it was almost a close amount solo kill to the lion. I think that gave her a lot. So right now, Fox Gaming really needs to be very careful because there's a lot of good setup for the Ice Blast to hit. The Dragon Tear from DK, the stuns from Tiny, and of course the stun from Asprey as well. They want to go for Nana again. Oh, they're going to go for Nana. They're going to go in. Miri goes deep in. They do secure that kill. Legayo is in the vicinity as well. Nice little combination there. She thought she was safe just rotating between, but uh, you get caught out sometimes. And Bren, very aggressive right now, trying to force the issue. Another one being the word by Jia. That was a terrible one. Uses the illusion. Here's the ice blast. That's going to be the first one. And I think it does connect. Epicenter is now going to be used. They're going to back off. Let him just kind of waste that one. She gets stunned into play. She's stuck around. Jill is there. They got the spin to win. And that's going to be a kill. And it's 8 1 Brenny Sports. This is like the Empire Strikes Back. They are angry and they are looking to win this. At least this movie, right? Yeah. 4K goalie right now in 9 minutes. That's the biggest weakness of a, of a lineup that is aiming to get to. His uh, ultimate reliant timing. Oh, Gio at the bottom side. Look at the spin. Cat Chaser is like, I don't care. I'm just going for creeps and just going to use the hood. She doesn't have boots or anything, so she's not like she's very fast. But Cat Chaser will back off now. She does have Ravage. Laning phase is the biggest weakness of Foxy Gaming. The other laning phase is really slow. Everyone wants to get level 6. And Brand, they totally, they totally punish that very slow pace of a lane coming up from Foxy. And once again, Mary, she Ooh. might be able to kill Nana again. She's sticking around. Nana's only level 5 right now. Yeah, you could probably time walk away just a little too far. Hazelia was actually in the vicinity as well. Both level 8 and uh, very scary to a level 5 faceless void. Nice roll in. They have the silence as well. They knew Nigan was right there. The nice toss off, <laughs> and Nigan is a dead same game. Man, Foxy Gaming, they are getting out game in terms of vision right now. Like, yeah, she has been put out so many very deep observer ward in very good timing. So, Foxy Gaming, they did not know that these observers are being laid down. There's one in front of their mid tier 2 tower, and then there's a one on the entrance to the triangle as well. So, this triangle kind of vision is. Giving brains for so much information for the Earth Spirit to constantly roll in to open up fights for the for the for the team to start with. So this is really very well played coming out from Jia. Oh Nana, level five, nowhere is safe. She gets been silenced and she's only five. 
And uh, again, you, you talked about the wards in this vision game, and they're kind of in an un unsuspecting. You might see one or so, but three? That's kind of ridiculous right in that mid lane. Has been killed. Absolutely. They have already diverted three observer as well from Foxy Gaming, so it's not that they did not try. Sleepless is going to run into the tiny and once again. That was because of the observer war at the entrance of the, of the triangle. Yeah, Miri just being a bully right there just says you shall not pass and destroys Sleepless and kills the courier of all things. So not looking good for Foxy Gaming. Strike Sandstorm. And so you take a little bit of damage, but you know, Dragon Knight kind of tanky, don't really care. I was in an anime, so I'm super strong. Yeah, I mean, Phantom might not be strong enough though. Okay, she's gonna survive the Ice Blast, but that's, you know, know, Foxy Gaming, they have been struggling to survive right now. Phantom Sword is super duper uh, low in terms of net worth. And if you look at Juggernaut, she has been farming. Maelstrom, next item, and the four of the other Brandy Spurs player are already spreading the bottom side. Yeah, totally turn it. Oh, roll in a little bit off the mark, but silence is all you really need. She's level six, though. Sleepless, nice two man earth spike. She's been on point with those. But Miri is there, the toss in forward, and it looks like they do end up securing Sleepless with the avalanche. And Miri is just completely turned it off. Cat Chaser. Look at a TP, trying to go for Hazelia, slowed down, but that Dragon Form, make it or take it. Nice little bash there. And uh, Hazelia on the run, nice little Pearl Strike there. And that should be enough damage. The Epicenter's being channeled. It's doing a decent amount of damage, especially with the Egg. And this is one of those things where Foxy Gaming are strong. Your key fight, and it's about 12 minutes where you're going to start to see that strength. Yeah, unfortunately, I think Ligaya's silence was a little bit too late. She could have used the silent first to stop the epicenter. I think that would help DK uh, survive a little bit more there. And perhaps they can buy more time for their teams to come in. But either way, they would be fighting into all the ultimates of Foxy Gaming. So dropping two might be a good one for them. You know, just dropping two might be a good news for them. Right. I mean, it, look, they had one kill before that, right? So you'll, they'll take whatever kill they got, but they got two on that one, um, essentially tripling their uh, their kills. But here we go, blink in forward. They got the nice little play. The Phoenix dive, Honey Lisa solo, barely surviving right now. Somehow alive, but the Ice, Ice Blast must? from downtown. She walks right into it, and she's... Wow. wow. Kobe. 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 <laughs> Gia with the blades, and the tips are out. Yeah, that's definitely a tip too for Jia. That was well calculated by her. And that's the platinum level of A for you, right? Like from downtown. That was very accurate. That was bullseye. That was right on point. I mean, it couldn't have, could not have been better. And the funny thing is, is like right in the open in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. Like you would have probably expected the Phoenix maybe to go back to high ground, maybe look to go back to the fountain and just kind of continue on in that direction. But she like literally stopped because she's like, oh, the ice blast is there, potentially might hit me. But like, you know, you can 360 no scope it like Gia. You're going to make plays like that. <laughs> yeah, she had no vision at all for, on that play as well. So that was like really good call by her. This would give them a lot of space in the enemy jungle. As you, as you can see, Juggernaut has been always farming very aggressively because she, because he knows that he can always just spin and TP out if the, unless the Faces White drops the Chrono. But right yeah, now, if you look at Faces, Faces Sorry, White is so poor right now. Only has a good face, does not even have the power threats in 14 minutes. Why are you so mean to the poor people? Can you like call them out and be like, oh yeah, it doesn't have much. This poor person. Like, look at you. You walk down the street and just judge people. Be like, oh, look at that poor person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so bad. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> All right, for the bloody kid, Mikuri's going in. That's the Chrono. Nice two-man Chrono so far. Cat Chaser's taking a lot of damage. The egg has been used, and it looks like they do get the watermelon, so they got something. is looking to go down here. The egg does crack, and that's going to be at least Ligaya's death, but at the cost of Cat Chaser. Wow, that was four ultimates being used. But unfortunately, unfortunately, they only managed to get us first. They're going for more now. Yeah, they want more. Miri's in position. Ningen is going to get slowly healed. No, she goes down and no real way to save any of their teammates. Honey Lisa is actually going out, which I'm a little worried about. Uh, but Sleepless is in the vicinity as well. Nana decides to just farm in the jungle. Catch Chaser. She TP it right into the tier 2. She wants to be defending a tower once again, just like the draw of last game. Oh, uh -oh. Azalea still has dragon form. Winks in, gets the dragon tail, but it was like, oh, that's actually the wrong hero I want to go on. Now they have Ice Blast though. 
Ice Blast, that does connect. Cat Chaser's gonna hit that one. The Sunray's gonna be used. Ravage is gonna be committed as well. They got three, and they're looking to turn this around. Gia is getting, getting burned up here, and they do have him frozen in the place. Cat Chaser, that is. She's getting a little low, and Jill is now here, and Cat Chaser's like, ah, I don't take the Omni. Cat Chaser survives. Sleepless says, why me? And Jill is to spin. Cat Chaser is next on the target list. Oh, but the Furrow Strike, they do end up getting that kill. The guy is on the high ground. Ningen still survives, but she gets blocked or she gets stunned in Gia with these plays. I mean, like the frozen plays, like just locking him in. Just wow. Just very well played by Brandy Sports there. Yeah, Brandy Sports is completely different from the last game. They went for this very similar kind of play style. They know that execution were their problem last game. And this game, they buckle things up. They executed perfectly so far. They were showing no mercy to Foxy so far and they're just this is the brain spot that we have known right we have seen them play this kind of style before they win their uh, they win their early phase and then they drop all this really offensive um, observer work to give them the information to play fast and they will always be playing as a ball together to get kills to zone enemy out from their own jungle while Gil will be the one getting all the farm yeah yeah, and, and it's it's paying off, right? Top three, all of them going the way of Brent Esports right now. They're just doing a great job of just controlling the pace. And uh, yeah, they backed off here, and they're giving a little bit of space to Foxy. But when you're up 10k, you have a little bit of room to maneuver. Maybe they're waiting for uh, ultimate and uh, to go right back in. And 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 you just picked up four boundaries in a row for herself on the top bounty side. Be that tells you how aggressive Brand has been playing. That there's four bounties on their own side and they were not free enough to pick them up. But that was another wait what? 240 go for every single one. And that's like another 1k go lead for Brains, but then they just got for themselves. Right. So they've, uh, I mean, every single rotation or any sort of a uh, group up that they've been doing has been working around, you know, Hazelia's uh, dragon form as they're chipping away at this top T2. Nana will be like, all right, I need to get back in this game. I need to be quiet. I need to figure things out. Oh, they found him. Oh no, honey, Lisa gets caught out. Oh, she goes down there. They end up finding it. They get the vision and nice little play here and they get the top T2. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Mm. That's a DD ring casually spawning in front of the Roshan. Guess what? This is the invitation to, to clean up the Roshan early. 18 minutes time. If they get these Aegis... Oh, hold on. Mary? We're gonna go. Mary goes all in, but it walks into four heroes. Not where you want to be. She what? gets fingered for her trouble. That in the epicenter. So alts were definitely committed for that one. But Mary, a little too dangerous. One versus four. That was a big overkill coming from Foxy though. Cat Chaser, she popped the Ravish at the last second. So they actually lost the Ravish. That's, and that's two minutes without Ravish and this is definitely Roshan time for Brand. And that's why they picked up the Rosh. They took out the DD, instantly go to the Roshan. Even though Tiny is dead, they know that Foxy has committed three ultimates for that. And that's a sign for you to take Roshan. You know, if, if you did commit Ravage, I think that Brand would not have taken this. Right? Like that's like the, right? Like that's the one thing. I mean, yeah, you don't have time, but because of the fact that you used all your alts for that, I mean, I guess it's a win for Miri in that sense. Basically, yeah, that's, that's actually a very good death in a sense. Imagine in a communication, Mary might be saying, "Okay, guys, I'm gonna go bait Ravish, and then you go, you guys go Roshan." That would be some five hit plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just feel like Cat Chaser just really overcommitted. I, I, there, there was really no reason to commit the Ravage. I mean, she was so low already, and then all of a sudden, Ray's on top of that, that was like, is under attack. all right, a little unnecessary. Three man smoke coming out from Bran. Nana broke the smoke though. Yeah, but Bran Nana is level 11. Vision. Look at Nana's level 11. Gia is level 11. And Ligaya, of all things. So, like, their team has struggled at this point. Mm. And uh, all right, much need a pause for Foxy Gaming. Mm -hmm. All right, this is time they need to talk things out. How do they approach the next fight? How do they approach the next tower defense? Because Aegis is on Juggernaut, so that's the that's definitely not the target to go on. Mm -hmm. so they have to find some ways to get to the back lines, maybe, or be 
coordinated enough to bring down either the, either the Dragonite or the Tiny first because both of them are providing so much for the team right now. So Zaya is a 7, 1 and 1, BKB very, very soon. Instead, I think BKB is already on the way, on the career. So that's going to make things even harder for them. Yo, like, to be honest, I feel like you need to focus. You got to find Gia. I think you need to kill her first. I think she's committing quite a lot, or she's uh, committing a lot to the team fights. And then she's plus, she, plus the fact that she's the squishiest one. Uh, I understand that you do need to kill Tiny and, uh, you know, Earth Spirit next because the amount of control that they provide. But I, I think in terms of priority list, you go, you go with Ancient Apparition, you kill her as quickly as possible, and then the next two. Yeah, she's definitely one of the easiest target to bring down instantly from Brand side. Probably the only target because looking at Spirit, 1.6k HP. I don't think this guy is burstable at all unless they drop every single thing on him. Yeah. Which they don't really want to. So I feel like Foxy 5 on 5 might be a little bit too hard for them right now, even though they drafted for it. But because they are so behind in terms of net worth and also goal, mm -hmm. 5 on 5 might not be able to help them come back into this game, even though they drop all the ultimates at once. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, not a good situation to be in as Foxy. They, they, thought they, were, they thought they were very comfortable I mean, with their draft, geez. considering they just steamrolled and came one with almost the same draft. But this is a, a different brand esports team, right? And you're seeing the, the flexibility that they provide and what they, what they can bring to the table. And it's a completely different play style, and uh, they need to react a little differently. Um, if anything, I think that they're learning what works and what doesn't work and how Brandy Sports really wants to play the game. Yeah, I think I think this really gives them a lot of information on how they should be approaching Game 3, if there's ever going to be a Game 3. Because it seems like Brandy Sports, they are very persistent with their style to play fast. Even though they've failed the first time, the second time around, they still do the same thing, but they do it in a better way. Yeah. So that's quite notable to me. That's quite respectable. And the game is going to be starting right now. <laughs> Mary is smoking at the bottom. Hey, he's, her smoke is about to get broken by a face of sword. So she got to be careful here. Up alone, all by herself. I will not forget this. How many blades am I holding out? Look at Nana. She's, just, she's scared. You know it's bad when you're position one. You can't really just, you know, safely farm anything. I mean... Her jungle's been completely warded. Like, she has really nowhere to go. Look at her just making the rotation all the way to the mid lane. Um, not really much she can do. Yeah, not much. It's really painful for her, for Faces White right now. The mid lane, she really wants to farm this, but ah, uh, Ketchy so is here. So I guess I'll just go to the NC then. Yeah. Oh, but they know and they're going to focus. I mean, the attention is on points. Roland, but the fast fingers, the blink away. Ningen is like, all right, I'm out. But here comes the TP. Honey, Lisa is here. The Amazon delivery goes all the way into enemy territory to make that delivery. Does go down. Cat chaser from the high end. The guy with this Ethan Lance picked up, his, his, his hero is so damn long, actually. The amount of reach is crazy from the yeah. guy. That in the level 10 talent is quite good. Oh, but sleepless. Oh, nigga, now he's going to go in. The nice little baby in, the baby ice blast actually connects onto two. So that's going to do some work. Lagai is slowly taking away. Cat Chaser's there. Chrono, but it's a huge commitment just for Miri. They do have the damage for that. So they've gotten something. It's a five versus four. They're trying to get more Cat Chasers. Literally chasing after the cats here. All four of them are running away. Cat Chaser does get Dragon Tails back. The Sun Ray's going to be on point. Here's the nice little Burrow Strike. Ravage is now going to be committed. Nigga is getting so low. Azalea is looking to fight this BKB and they get Nana as well. Omni Slash doing some work. Cat Chaser is looking to go down as well. And it looks like they've turned this around. They've gotten Honey Lisa as well. Sleepless running for her life saying, hey, all I can do is pick up this rune and maybe taunt on away. But it's a four for one. They, they are going for Sleepless as well. The guy does not have any stones anymore. He has one more stone left. But does not... Oh, she wants to roll. She wants to get like the Sleepless. No, yeah. she's gonna get out. That water wombo combo jumpo don't ball coming out from Fawzi, you know. They dropped every single ultimate. And they were only able to get the tiny. And that tiny alone took away three ultimates from Foxy. And because even though Ravage quite hit on everybody, except for the Juggernaut, because she spin to dodge that. But then still everyone was tanky enough. To, to, to survive the, the ultimates coming up from Foxy Gaming because they're so far ahead. They have, in, they have enough itemization and levels right now to get themselves tanky to survive the, this out, super ultimates coming up from Foxy. So, 
Dragon Tail. They've got him, uh, at least, uh, Cat Chaser in the spots, but, oh, wow, that Sunray is doing some work. Jill does need to be careful. She's gonna spin for now. Um, looks like they're gonna just retreat, maybe. Burl Strike, but on Dragon Form, Earth Spike as well, lock them in, but, jeez, Azalea, very tanky. And actually, okay, just one thing on that last fight in the bottom T2 mid. When they killed Miri, they were up five versus four, and they over pursued and they continued to go in. Like that was a completely like, hey, we got Miri, we need to back off. We have no ult. There's no reason to be a fight. Oh, what's that? I say that. Oh, I? Well, the blink in, and they're gonna go. Negan goes down. The ice blast is just gonna hit her friends, but doesn't do any damage. Cat Chaser's in position. Position that is. Cat Chaser does have the uh, the deep off there. They do get Legaya, so they got something. But at the cost of Negan, that's not a bad trade, at least for Brandy Sports. Yeah, it's a position four for position two right now, and obviously, like if you look at an average chart, Osprey is almost overtaking the mid sanking at, at this point. So, when you are not being ahead, sanking really doesn't feel like a very good hero because every time she borrow strikes in, she's most likely gonna be dead. So, 14k goalie coming up from Brand right now. And for Foxy, they are already choking themselves in, in, in inside of their own base. There's not much they can do right now unless they want to smoke out to break the choke and hopefully find someone with the Grono Sphere because that is available right now. I mean, you, you know things are bad when Jill is like almost double Nana's network, right? Like this mm -hmm. is not looking good. I, I, I just feel like <sighs> Nana has not had the space. She has not felt comfortable in this entire game. This has been a rough one. I mean, just the map, kind of map control, owning the triangle like this. Like, where can you go but up, right? Yeah, especially, oh no, mid lane, Nana. She's gonna die to the combo again. No chance at all. No chance at all. Ice Blast into Aval Avalanche Toss. She couldn't do anything. Yeah, no real chance. You know, I, I think it comes back to the laning phase for me, right? Mm -hmm. When Nana was like one versus one, yeah, but she was still losing in that one versus one. And then Honey Lisa came, two versus one, and they were still kind of losing. Like from that moment, you're like, oh, this is not going to be a good game for Foxy Gaming. Yeah, when you're off lane, we're able to, was able to be one versus, you know, was able to laugh all left alone at the island and still having a very good lane Radiant then it means that the enemy off lane must be suffering they're trying to make a move here on guild it seems oh, they're gonna get back oh sleepless just looking to steal runes oh there's a second one sleepless uh she at least got two runes and uh i mean that's profit right yeah that's 160 go for everyone on their team there's not not bad at all. Mid lane, catch is a should be okay. So you have two bracer and a and a pipe plus essence ring. She's completely fine here. Gosh, being used on his Zelia, so tanky right now. Now a real chance. Earth spike as well, but I mean it's there's really no way they commit for this. Oh, as I say that, they look at to turn this around. They thought they were the aggressors, but no, they are not. Sleepless goes down. Jia is doing so much damage right now with the max level on Ice Vortex. View of this card plus the shard that does that turns Eye Vortex into a damage item right now because he's constantly doing um, DPS. So it's pretty crazy how much damage GI is also doing on the post with it. Oh, the Omni Slash. Cat Chaser's taking all of that. Nobody's coming to help. Nana now comes in now with a Chrono though, but it looks like she's taking so much damage. She's been uh, gonna get very low the roll in if i'm nigging here comes the buybacks they're coming they got the sun ray on two and that's a it. one if they get them yes they do they do heal jugs no aegis on this one gia honey lisa's moving forward they're trying to find somebody gia in a nice little spot she should tp away dragon knight will just run away and uh yeah i think that was not the worst defense by foxy gaming Regeneration. that was absolutely amazing from them actually because Faces what did not did not get to he, he, he did not die. He didn't have to use the buyback. The two buybacks were from Lion and also Tiny, which is completely okay if they can win such a big fight for them. Tiny and also not money. to mention Tiny actually bought back for this as well. I'm not sure why Mary bought back there. But this was slowed down her BKB timing by quite a lot. And that sundry damage coming up from Harley Lisa was insane because Skadi was picked up by Juggernaut means that more HP pool means more percentage base damage coming up from Sunray. 
yeah, it's going to do some work. And uh, yeah, she's very tanky in that sense. But yeah, uh, the percentage base, pretty important, especially at this stage of the game. But everything was committed. All alts are down. Now it's a matter of just dewarding take control of your jungle again, try to do what you can uh, and to get yourself back in this game. But if you're looking at what, you know, Foxy Gaming are playing, Nigan is actually stealing some of the farm from Nana. I don't know how I feel about this, especially since uh, Nana has not had that much space to farm with. Yeah, I mean, they are just super hungry for anything right now. Nigan was very close to the BKB. That's why she wanted the farm. She now has a BKB, so it's time for Faces White to get the farm for her own BKB now. But because of all the three, all the three towers, all three, all three tier one towers from Brand's one side are still standing. There's no way Foxy could turn this big team fight victory to anything. They could only start. They could only dewar a little bit, and that's all. Yeah, no real chance there. Nana just getting a little bit scared, realizing that she, hey, she's she's in a bad spot here. She's gonna at least take the mid creeps here, but. Everyone else is just chilling in the in their base. Not really much you can do at this point as Foxy Game. Mm, not at all. They have to wait for a Bang Spot to take another initiation. And hopefully they are strong enough to defend that. They don't have buybacks on Lion and also the Tide Hunter. So this time they might need Sanking to be the sacrificial lamb to, to be to, to be jumped on. So the counter in initiation could come in. Mm -hmm. See, well, let's see how they play this one. I mean, Roshan is still up in uh, eight or so seconds. Obviously, the players don't know that, but it, they do sense something is near. Oh, Ice Blast. They're going to try to go for Nana. Nana actually just uh, time walks away. Nigan just gets hit by the errant uh, Ice Blast. Says, what the hell? Okay. That's interesting. No one's going to die, unfortunately. Like for Foxy, it's all about slowing down the game right now. Can they slow the game long enough? So that Brand Spot has more chances to make a mistake. But right now, Brand, they are already in the Roshan. Cheese Aegis plus the shard. Focusing on it. I mean, just the amount of damage they have with Jill and Hazelia just kind of taking it. Uh, this should go down very quickly and really nothing Foxy Gaming can do. This is the this is the the, the, the bad spot about hey, they, they really can't fight at this point. Yeah, Tiny is gonna get the Aegis plus the shard. So Tiny is all is actually going to be the one hitting tower for their team. I like I, I actually like this a lot. Oh, nice little, oh they, caught they caught him! They found Nigan! Nice little roll in. The guy was just sweeping the sides and they end up getting the kill on that one. Nigan goes down. Wait, why are they there? No, they were split pushing, and then they just happened to oh they're like, okay, we're fine, we're just gonna go in the trees and just TP on out, but the guy was a little like a vacuum cleaner on the sides. And just like Sweeping through, making sure that there was nobody there, and ended up just rolling right into Niggins. I don't know if that was lucky or unlucky. At I mean, that was a good consciousness from the Gaia to just keep scanning the trees, knowing that they might be doing some sweep push. And here you go, look at Mary. He's punching the tower, but it's so slow. Oh, yeah, with the, I mean, with the, the, the Phoenix, the, the fire spirit on top. Oh, Glimmer, they've got the dust. They found the silence and the kick right onto the sleepless. The guy is like, okay, I did my job and I'm out. I cast my three spells and I'm out. But here comes Nana looking to go in. Time walks forward. And uh, Nana does have a uh, DD, but she just got ice blasted. And I don't think she really wants to fight here. Cat Chaser didn't get the memo. And now he's going to eat the uh, Omni Slash with Sleepless. Sleepless glimmers herself. She does she stays for a, alive for a little bit longer, but she does die in the end. Bro Strike keeping Honey Lisa alive for now. Oh, but the Lagaya rolling. And here comes the Chrono, and it's been committed. And that's going to be with the Magnetize. The Egg is going to be used on the back end of this. Miri's still somehow still alive. Nana's looking to fight this, but it looks, she has to time walk away. The Egg is now going to be uh, open. Uh, but Jill just gets stunned and just backs off and picks the Rax. Oh, I think there's some huge miscoordination coming out from Foxy. Faces White got hit by the Ice Blast. He's going back. But Tanta is still staying there and Tanta just died without buying for another 40 seconds. Oh, Nigan is going to commit the BKB, but that was a defensive one just to stay alive. No real way that we're going to fight there. So this is a pretty big win for Brenny Sports. And it's all about the small things at this point. Yeah. Seems like Aegis is still available on Tiny. And it seems like they would just go back to regen for a little bit and go for a second round because I don't see how they, why they will want to stop. There's still um, uh, so only stash is not available for another 70 seconds, but Juggernaut completing the butterf uh, butterf butterfly very soon, and that's gonna be the scary part. In fact, she she's gonna have 
butterfly in another wave of creeps. So, All right, that's for the very record. First timing. Yeah, I mean, Juggernaut, you, you talk about the butterfly being scary. I actually find the fact that she has cheese the most scary thing because I'm lactose intolerant. Okay. Good to know that. <laughs> you, you needed to know. All right, just saying. Okay. <laughs> We're just opening up to one uh, another, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of you told me. Uh, I learned a lot about you today. Good, good, good. good. That's good. So what else do you want to know about me? Uh, just feel free to ask. It, we should do an AMA right now. AMA <laughs> <laughs> right now? <laughs> In the middle of the Grand Finals game two. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the CPU you are using now? What CPU? Oh, uh, Chris, Intel. You using. Yeah, Intel, Intel, of course. Cool. Speaking about Intel, there's a giveaway for everyone that's interested. So feel free to check. Oh, okay, hold on. You can check this later. The roll in. Nana's going to get destroyed. Their cat chaser running for her life. No real chance of the sun ray, but it, it doesn't do anything against the ice blast. Uh, deep off, that is. And no heal there. Legaya's going to roll in and completely miss, but that's fine because you got your teammates that will just clean up. And uh, it looks to be very bad here. And they're going to focus on the T4s. They realize that there's no buyback. GG's been called. Let's go to a game. Ooh, yeah. This is what we have been anticipating. Game 3 coming up from Brent and Fox Gaming. I, I just... It is actually very impressive that Brent Sport, they identify what... Uh, they, they identify that, okay, play style is not the biggest problem here. Okay, the biggest problem is our execution in our game one. That led to a lot of very bad fights and a lot of bad decision making. So this time, let's do things correctly. Let's speed things up again, play fast as well. And this time around, Foxy Gaming did not get to have the upper hand to just chill and counter initiate because they are always getting gone on by this other spirit, Tiny, and also a so well played, very well played by brand. This is the familiar brand that we have been casting. All, all tournament long, and I'm glad that they get themselves back into the game tree with the same way. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we've been blowing up a lot of smoke in terms of uh, Gia's play, but like as a support player, this is the first thing that I see, right? The fact that she's 5126, she's the lowest net worth on her team with 8k, but if we're looking at damage, she's actually second place. She had 17,000 damage, only second to Tiny on our team with, so you're doing so much with next to nothing in terms of itemization. Like this is just being able to stay alive, throwing out your spells many, many times and just blowing things up. So a big props to her, but I felt like, again, just Brandy Sports really on fire today. This is the brand that we know and love and we, we we're we happy to see them here as they're gonna go into a game three up against Foxy's Gaming. What does Foxy Gaming need to do to better prepare themselves for that game three? Well, I think they could definitely go for this um, play style again. I think the biggest problem here is really how to stabilize the lane, right? Because we know that whenever you want to go for this mid-game oriented lineup that is so reliant on your ultimates, you have to have a stabilized lane so that you don't lose out too much. Game one, they managed to go 50-50 with Brain Spurs. They keep the game really slow, get to their levels uh, steadily, and then fight back. At this game, though, it was like what one to eight, eight to one start, and Brand Esports totally just just snowball through them after laning phase because of the lane advantage. So that's the one thing that Foxy Gaming has to avoid. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, one last shout out to our sponsors, Intel, Yahoo, and Tokenox Exchange. This is the FSL Dota 2 Open. That was game two. We're going to go to a game three of the grand finals that will be coming up very, very soon. Stay tuned. Happy Mother's Day. This is FSL Dota 2 Open. This is going to be game three. And Brenny Swartz, like the Empire Strikes Back, really struck back in this one in the sense that, hey, they came out storming. They came out swinging and they were very, very strong. But what were your thoughts on that one, Arthur? I, I like how we're, I like how were they so confident in their own play style. Even though they feel in game one, they play the same thing at game two. They tweak a little bit. They adjusted a little bit in terms of the, how aggressive they need to play on the on the early game. They keep forward. They keep moving forward on there, and they eventually just make Foxy Gaming look so bad in game two. So yeah. that was really impressive coming out from Brand. Game three now is back to best of one to de 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 to determine who's the champion. So. I want to see both of them bring their A-plus game and also A-plus heroes as well. I mean, in game one, we saw the overextension of Brenny Sports, right? They were trying to take fights that they probably shouldn't have. Uh, we definitely commented on that. And the fact that, like, you know, I, I think Brenny Sports tuned into the cast, got our insights, and then actually used it in terms of game two. No, they didn't. Uh, but they used, I mean, they, they basically just calmed down. 
right for game mm -hmm. two in the sense that they were definitely more prepared and they were just like hey we're gonna play our play style we know how this one will work and we're gonna win because of that so they did very well in game two yeah exactly like going into the game three we have seen a couple of bands already and there's one band there's on the a a that's a respect band for Jia right there Fox yeah, Gaming, straight. they go for this Elder Titan. Now, I was suggesting Elder Titan last game, like on how good this hero is in this current meta. And now they go for this Mirana plus Elder Titan combo, which is a very old school combo that's very similar to the Dying Sanking team. Mirana the brand likes to play. Mm -hmm. So and I'm, I'm, I'm like looking it. forward to this. Yeah. yeah, it's a great pick here. I mean, it, it kind of deals with Sand King. Just sleep him, make sure he gets out of the sandstorm. I mean, Sand, Shadow Ladies Shaman wants to stand back. still and shackle you. So just an easy, easy target. And I mean, setting that kind of uh, that the sleep up, maybe with an arrow, you have that potential. But it's not as reliable as you really want for that Marana arrow. Not to say that, you know, uh, I, I'm not sure who's going to be playing the Marana here. But uh, it's one of those things where... Yeah, if you have a nice, remain. easy setup, it makes just your life a lot easier. 100%. Like, Elder Titan Mirana, this is the remain. this is a very good counter initiation as well. Also, good in initiation, Radiant of course, with the Elder Titan, but it's always going to be hard if Elder Titan would want to start the fight with a Storm first. Mm -hmm. Elder Titan, most of the time, she would, uh, she would be able to get a multiple man Storm if they... if. He is the one that is getting gone on. That his team is the one that is getting gone on. And Brainsport definitely is going Ten all seconds. in here, really? running into the face of Foxy Gaming. You know that they want to do it, especially if the Sanking Shaman Five openings come here from them. Dying they could go for more. Grimshaw is already banned out. They go for Life Stealer, super early Life Stealer pick, but it's one of the best to play with the Sanking, knowing how they can abuse the Infest Bomb for themselves. And also, I mean, the Elder Titan basically says, you know, hey, picking an edgy hero, probably not the best idea against, you know, an Elder Titan who pretty much negates most of yep. that armor. So it makes sense to go with like a strength based hero and Lifestealer is perfect for that. Um, and plus, if you don't really know what to pick, I think Lifestealer is kind of like that safe remaining. one where, you know, you can deal with Marana and E.T. It's not the end of the world. Five so I think it's a pretty remaining. decent pick up here, but they've countered with a Slaughter pick. How do you feel about that, if, especially in the laning phase? Well, I think Life Stealer is not that bad against Slada anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but however, overall in the game, there's always the bash that really counters what Life Stealer wants to do, which is to fight with Rage. He'll always be bashed. And of course, Corrosive Haze is always going to be good to pair with the other data as well. Okay. All right. Um, so they've got their, uh, like, you got your crush with that. And that combos in with Marana. Uh, you know, I, I think they're going to have a nice little combination. I'm thinking that this is probably going to be an ET5. Um, just a little bit easier, just something kind of strength based uh, and strong. But um, what do you think to counter Life Stealer, especially as a carry player for Foxy? Actually, there's a Dying lot of um, good heroes that are quite available right now. Well, Branson went for Lena, another squishy backline heroes that might get countered by this Slaughter Corrosive Haze very much. I'll say PA looks pretty good here for Foxy if they want to go for the PA Slaughter combo. There's a lot of um, armor reduction already from Elder Titan plus Slada, so I was I can see PA just going in, popping off this uh, Shaman and Lina in like one to two hits. Mm -hmm. Another hero they can go for is maybe the the Razor against the Life Slayer could be pretty decent as well. But if it if it is a Razor game, I would like to see the Razor on the mid rather than on the safe lane. So that's mm -hmm. another hero they can think of. What else? Um, Spectre is already out, Faces White out as well. I'll say Swan could be also pretty good here against Brand. Like okay. Swan against all these squishy heroes like Sanking, Shaman, Lina, plus Corrosive Haze. I think Swan could easily just chop everyone down as well. So basically, anyone that can output a huge amount of DPS de damage would be the choice for Foxy Gaming here. While you can be squishy, you're definitely going to need to have that BKB, right? And so Sven will eventually get the BKB, and I do like that pick, and I think it's, you know, you got to deal with the fact that, like, Lina, Shaman, Sanking, all, all that control, right? And the stuns that they provide. So you need something that can kind of sustain that and naturally will build up that BKB, or maybe you go a different route. Maybe you do something like... Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think what else kind of you just kind of burst people like PA style, maybe. But I, even then, it's kind of like you want to prior like deprioritize the the BKB. Yeah, I think Troll is another hero if they want to stabilize the lane against mm -hmm. Sanking. Because yep. all, all I suggested was melee hero. They might not be very good against Sanking. Troll uh, is a hero that can buy S and Y. 
which is really good against Sanking Shaman Lena, and then also a nature BKB builder as well. Pairing with the Slaughter, they can take Roshan so fast too, and also throw is one of the better heroes to hit tower as well. Cena just very nicely with the DK too. I'm quite surprised Foxy didn't pick their carry here because now Brand will have the two bands to ban out the best hero to play with the Slaughter, and obviously they take down, they take away, then remove the PA right away. Yeah, and uh. I mean, they've banned the Leshrac Storm in return. I mean, uh, assuming that they're, they're, they're basically saying, hey, this Lena is definitely not a mid. We don't respect Ten it. Seconds um, remaining. But would you play Lena as a mid Five against the, the Dragon Knight? I think it kind of comes out 50-50-ish, right? Yeah, I think Lena right now is a hero that we have seen VG playing it a lot, especially on Ori, <laughs> on the Lena mid, because right now this patch, there's so many bounty runes, there's so many water rune, bounty rune, anything like that, that for you to review mana. So Lena is very good here in, in, in this, in this um, scenario. Uh, Lena, all right, but into the Morphling, hmm, let's see. Sanking Lena against Morphling Elder Titan, that feels pretty okay mm -hmm. for the lane if they want to go for it. I think no, Brand I like will it. want to find a gotcha remaining. pick right here that is good against DK and also good against Morphing. What would that pick be? Five though? seconds remaining. Hmm. They're um, quite squishy, so they probably want to get one frontline hero for themselves so that it so that, that hero could protect the shaman and Lena. Mm -hmm. If they are putting these two heroes on the support, which I'm not a big fan of, to be very honest. Alright, they go well, what is mm. Okay. okay. That's just okay, I guess. It's yeah. just a hero that, um, yeah, they can play fast for sure. They can be running into Foxy's gaming, setting up setting up kills with the use after into Ether Rannon, and that would give um, that would be the way to lead the chain stun from Shaman, Sanking, and Lina. But the thing is, they're so squishy though. They're mm -hmm. so squishy, and if they don't get to burst down this Slada DK first, and they get initiate counter initiated on, mm -hmm. I feel like they're just dead actually because they have no save at all. Yeah, yeah, which is a big concern, right? I mean, the amount of burst that, you know, Nana can do on the Morphling, I mean, it, it, Corrosive Haze on top of that, and then you're just kind of on top of this, and, uh, you know, you, you're going to have to outplay them for any sports, and I feel like uh, the situation that they're in right now with the squishier backline of Shadow Shaman and Lina, I think that you might have an issue, especially if that Morphling gets even close to you. So positioning is going to be key. Vision, of course, is definitely high on that list. And they need to ensure that, hey, wherever the enemy is, they've got a good idea of where they that where the enemy team is. Yeah, and also Dragonite naturally is a very good hero against all the spirits. Because mm -hmm. spirits, normally they will want to be roaming around or they want to be farming jungle. Every, and every time that happens, Dragonite will just pop the dragon from and start punching the tower down. So it's so hard for spirits to play into DK. Also, on how tanky DK is, one spirit won't be able to zone this DK out of the lane. So that's gonna be that's gonna be a very big issue for brains for to deal with. And when they finally have to pull resources to deal with this DK, Morphling will be the one getting free farm. It's gonna have a ton of space, and that's like the biggest thing is just kind of protecting yourself from that sense. You gotta stop Prepare her from getting any battle. sort of farm. Mind you, this is game three, FSL Dota 2 open, Jesus. sponsored by Intel Yahoo to Tokenized Exchange. And we're going to be here with Game 3, Brenny Sports versus Foxy Gaming. Who do you like in this matchup? Honestly, once again, I, I will go for Foxy again. Their draft is more of my cup of tea, I will say. There's a lot of there's a lot of box being ticked. They have a front line for the Morphling. They have Slada that goes in for the initiation. Lots of armor and uh, lots of damage amplification as well from Slada and ET. And also, they have pretty good setup for the Mirana Arrow too. I feel like it's a much easier draft to play for Foxy if they could stabilize their lane and don't go that bad. Comp like, don't go that bad like the last game. I think yeah. they should be fine. Okay, all right. I think you called Foxy Gaming last last game as well, and you were incorrect. So I expect okay. that to go on. I'm gonna go with Brandy Sports. I think momentum is a huge thing. And I okay. think that you're going to see a little bit of that. They've kind of figured it out. Foxy Gaming right now have been punched in the gut right now after game two. And they need to kind of recover from that and get themselves back in this game. And I feel like mentally, you know what I mean? Like this is, uh, I mean, I, we're going to have to see if they're capable of off if, to, to fight back, so to speak, and to kind of get themselves back into this game three. Why are you trying so hard to explain that the reason for you to root for a brand? I think that could be just summarized into one sentence. You are a GR fanboy. That's all. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. 
All right. And that's Are no you calling me out? Are you saying I'm a simp or something? <laughs> Is that I mean, what you're there's, saying? There's no shame for that. Like, Jia huh? is a fantastic player. She she played really well. Yeah, it's okay. Actually, she did. Yeah, she but, did. But you know, I'm I'm gonna give props to where props are due and Brandy Sports in general. <laughs> I I love this team. They're playing well together and they they've been playing very well. And I think Jill has done well because of the presence of Jia in in the lane. I I think that that's a pretty big difference from previous renditions of this Brandy Sports team. Yeah, for sure. And also, the, all the I think vision game, like how Jia really brings in the vision advantage to Brand, that actually really enables Mary to do whatever she wants. Like the last game, Tiny, she was jumping here and then killing everyone. That's because of the vision that she had. Sounds like you're more of a simp than I am, just saying. No, I'm, I'm just uh, explaining things very scientifically. Ah, okay. Okay. And in all a right. very enthusiastic way, that's, that's just me. Okay, yeah, no, okay, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> Bro strike right onto Honey Lisa, and Hazelia has actually taken a decent amount of damage, but Nana getting a little low. She does get stunned. The LSA is on point. The uh, Honey Lisa spirit oh, wait. is going to go in, and the right clicks. Oh, just one more, and she salves back up. So close, yet yeah, so far. Nana is oh. the one that's getting a lot of harassment Ooh. down, actually. Has to morph just to make sure she didn't get killed by that right click from uh, Ligaya there, but that was actually very close. Girl strike. Oh, Nilisa. LSA combination. This is the easiest LSA of her life, and she Whoa. does go down. Hazelia first will draw first blood. Nilisa got to be careful with the positioning here. There's a lot of creeps, so really, really hard for Nana to cover her. Oh, bottom lane. Oh, that's Chaser are getting a little low. Sleepless and them, uh, and the creeps are getting in on this. They're doing a decent amount of damage here. There's a lot of chainstun coming out from these two um, offlane duos. Mirana, Slada, stun into Arrow. That's a sprawl strike into LSA as well. Ooh, so these I two side you. lanes are going to have a lot of killing potential. And Miri and uh, Ningen go their separate ways, each picking up a water rune, and they'll go back into the lane. But Void Spirit Dragon Knights, not a huge edge to either hero, right? Shouldn't be. That should be a pretty 50-50 lane. But if you look at last hit wise, though, Mary, 15 to 3 compared to the 8 0 from DK. She's having a hell of a time. Yeah, that's she basically pretty... secured every single last hit for herself. That's pretty impressive. Ooh, Nana getting pearl struck into the LSA. But they got to the sleep and they're going to look to turn this around. I think that hit was a little early. The way forward, forward and they do end up securing the kill on the Gaia. They're turning this around and Hazelia now needs to run for her life. She has, oh, a baby pearl strike. Oh, and the spirit is on point and Honey Lisa with the outplay. And I feel like if you can play Elder Titan well, you are a great asset to Dota like myself. I play Elder Titan. Oh wow, okay. <laughs> that's, <laughs> a, that's an interesting way to come here as well. Cool. Did not see that coming, I must say. Boom. <laughs> Flex. Boom. <laughs> uh, that's a good one for Honey Lisa. Yeah, that's a really good staple gun. Missed like really utilizing her body very well just to get a couple of punch into her Zyla. Mm, now Morphing is level four. Once Morphing gets to level five, oh, that's gonna be way easier for Lana to land to, to lane on this um to, to lane this very to lane into this very explosive duel. Like what 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 style morphling are you gonna go? Are you going the E-blade style or more the right right click? Okay, crush, arrow, easiest arrow of her life, but Jill not Oh, another bash there, and she has to rage just to keep herself alive. Yeah. I was talking like nice lifestyle now is not that bad against Slada because you can go for items like Chain Mew really early on. The Freeze is is, uh, is pretty Radiance good as well. It gives you um, the, the lifesteal. So it seems like Cat Chaser, she's proving me wrong. The Burrow Strike, oh, and they pop Nana. She goes down. The LSA Burrow Strike combination is just too much. Oh, did they catch her before she shift? I think so, right? I think so. I think yeah. so, yeah. Because she died at 440 HP, so yeah. she might want to be picking up some casual raindrops or whatnot to, just to keep her alive. Mm, that is a little bit unnecessary there by, by Nana, but mm -hmm. gotta be careful here from now on. By the way, what build do you go on this morning? Oh, yeah, you were asking. Um, I will see. Okay, hold on. She oh might be gosh, first strike again. LSA again. She waveforms back, and Honey Lisa's like, come on, do I have to babysit you? Do I have to hold your hand? What do I need to do? 
All right, first of all, you, Hanisa has to feed her the cell first. Holy guy, yeah. Ooh, no! <laughs> With the cell, she got outplayed there, and Honey Lisa will look to die as well. And the tip and the disrespect, Lagaya. I like it. Oh my god, that was so bad. <laughs> now Morphing does not have TP for 40 seconds. We were seeing how uncutable she will be when she hits level 5. And I guess she'll be hitting level 5 in one minute later. Oh, that is so painful for Nana. That was so unnecessary. That was just a snowballing effect, right? You sh when you die, when you're not, not supposed to, then all the bad things are just gonna happen after it. And now that Mirana has to TP all the way to the top lane, it means that Cat Chasers are completely alone at the bottom side. If they are managed, if they're able to punish Cat Chasers here, that then the early laning phase will just completely crumble for Foxes because of this one misplay or two misplays in a row uh, from Nana. That was massive. I mean, she had a salve on and she was thinking that she could morph away, but the Dragon Slave was just just barely catching her out and just killing her. And Ligaya, that was a pretty massive play and that completely changes the game dynamics. It does. Look at Lassius right now. Last play has 29, close to 30, almost double up of what the Morphing has right now. Oh man, and Nana is back. Yeah, she's level 5 or whatever, but I feel like Honey Lisa needs to just... Okay, here we go. A little bit of a pause in the action, but okay. Bottom lane, we haven't talked too much about this. Let's talk about this Life Stealer uh, Slaughter. I, I, obviously, you said it was very playable in that sense, but if we're looking at last hits, Life Stealer, 30, 30 last hits, 4 denies, 28-8. I mean, it, it, it's still 50-50. Yeah, 50-50, that wouldn't go so bad for the life stealer. Uh, now that he picks up the chain meal, so this is gonna help him um, mitigate a lot of the physical damage coming out from Slaughter. But once Slaughter get level 6, that's really where the the problem is gonna come in. With the corrosive haze, Slaughter should be able to do a lot of physical damage on the life stealer. But Cat Chaser, level 5. I mean, Jill is level 6. So in terms of uh, at least experience, she's up right now. Uh, but they have three heroes from Bren on the top lane. Miri is going to just pop out of the shadows and they go for Nana again. And she's died so many times already. Three times at seven minutes. This is not looking good for Foxy Gaming, which is the team that you thought was going to win because you're always usually wrong. <laughs> wow! Wow! I, I, we know that this is the last game, but you you don't have to try so hard to roast me every single time you can. <laughs> if I can't roast my co-caster, I don't want to cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Nana was trying her best already. She was at 880 damage, 80 HP by the time she died. She just did not expect the War Spirit was there with the with the Invis rune. So that was a bit sad for her. Ningen on the other side might be that. Might be dead here. Do they have damage? Yes, Going they do. In. Yeah, they do. Oh, it's Dragon Knight. <laughs> Man, this is the snowballing effect from the from the from the death on on Morphling, really, because the DK now she has the sense of urgency for her to do something on the map so that they could salvage this huge pressure from top side. That's why she was trying to push the mid lane and they get punished again. And Honey Lisa trying her best to defend this tower too, but should be able. Um, Branch should be able to take this tower very soon. And uh, Honey Lisa there just puts him to sleep and just runs out of there. But again, this is this is all about momentum, right? Even from game two to game three, like they knew that they had, you know, uh, to kind of understanding who they need to prioritize, making sure that Nana had a bad game um, in the last game, and then forcing it in this one where you're kind of making her very uncomfortable. And Jill will now go on to Honey Lisa. She's trying to TP away. Ooh, that's nice. She does get out. That was a very heads up play. Yeah, that's a very calm play as well by Honey Lisa. Honestly, I feel Honey Lisa is one of the more impressive players coming here from Foxy. The, the two Phoenix game uh, previously was pretty impressive. And now that the other Titan, the way she the way she secured the lane before the, the disastrous death for Morphing was pretty pretty nice too. Getting double kill for the for the lane and then right now TPing out very calmly as well. I think this is something that you have you got to need when it comes to the game three and the grand final. You need to keep you need to keep your composure and keep calm. Yeah, yeah. I mean which is Easier said than done, right? Like, Dota is a very emotional game. I'm sure you've run into some toxic people, um, you know, even me. Um, just like, just, it's a very difficult game, right? People are going to flame you for everything. So it, it, it's, again, composure is not the easiest of things, but it's kind of like mental warfare, right? Just kind of stay calm. We got this. 
And, uh, okay. Muffin Lady, you're fighting, getting this. Nana thought she was safe, just sticking around the tower, but, uh, she's getting gone on here. But Miri will back off now and give a little bit of respect. Mm, they're pressing immediately now. Where is the Dragon Knight, though? Dragon Knight is up all the way at the bottom side. But this bottom tier one tower by Brent's so healthy, though. Do they really want to give up the mid tower for this? Okay, that's a DD run for Mary. Oh, okay. one center's being channeled, and they go right to Cat Chaser with a Pearl Strike, and that should do enough damage. More with the Shackle as well, but Legaya TP's in, and Ningen thought she was fine with Dragon Form, and she just flies her wings, and she just gets on out of there. Sleep, uh, sleepless on the Mirana, also dies to the urn of Shadow by Ward Spirit, so that's a very early urn chase coming out from Ward. She's building the Super Vassal against the Morphing and the DK. Uh, right now, 8 to 3, 2k goalie already from Brand, and it seems like this is gonna be history repeating itself again from game 2. Brand, they are having a very good lead after the laying phase, and you have seen, like you, right? This is the this is the comfortable play style that you want to be playing in. Everyone else making move should just be farming and becoming the insurance for the team. <laughs> and Miri, top uh, net worth, uh, you know. Cat Chaser is second, Dyer's though. That's a little Midas. bit of a surprise, right? At 10, uh, 11 minutes, excuse me? Yeah, she has a Midas. Ah. Uh, yeah. Like, oh. oh. Burrow Strike, but Moonlight is now going to be committed, and they're just going to just kind of disengage with that. The stop is going to be a little off the mark, but Cat Chaser is alive, and that's the best thing. Yeah, Cat Chaser probably thinks that, oh, my Morphing is having such a bad game, and while Dyer's I'm having such a nice one, let's try to get into the Midas and maybe try to solo by myself. So that's probably what's Cat Chaser is trying to think, and you know, at least he's trying to make herself. She's trying to make herself a game changer here for the team. And, and she's done a great job in the sense that Life Stealer is like what he's in the top lane. She's kind of farming what she can, but she's uh, creating space elsewhere where the rest of the team are, are sticking around. The Serpent Warrants have got them locked in. All right, here's the uh, the Split Earth. It's gonna connect onto it, and Gia gets. To Shot in. Nigan is going to make the TP here. Honey Lisa is looking to focus us. But Gia is somehow still alive, running away. Cat Chaser is looking to get real low. He does. She does go down. Miri. Oh, the Remnant is just barely out of range. And they've got a two for one, all at the cost of Gia for Cat Chaser. And of course, uh, Honey Lisa. Full Street is going to fall as so well. No more leaps. She's going to fall. And third. Okay. The third kill going to the way of Bran. Everything just to trade the Shaman away. And also mid lane is really getting pressured by Gil. She has the haste rune. She should be able to pressure this mid lane without any risk. Radiant structures are yeah, fortified. And, uh, they're going to glyph here and uh, glyph in return just to kind of make sure that they got the creep wave, protect that tower. But it is low. I don't think that they're actually going to be able to defend this as there are four heroes from Bren right now. Middle tower oh, early in early in fast coming from West Spirit. Invest early, gets returned early, right? So they are going to the Dragon Knight. This is a rather tanky target, though. What? what? Where is going in? The Remnant is a little off the mark. Ning and is uh, trying to juke this and uh, Dragon Tail and the Infest Bomb and surprise walks right into the Remnant. Here comes the TP. Cat Chaser is now here. And uh, actually body blocking Ningen. Ningen is still alive. Gil is like, okay, now we've gone a little too deep. The sleep is actually not going to do anything. It's going to be a little off the mark. The LSA is going to be dodged. And they've gotten Gia. They've got the crush. And they're trying to go for more. Maybe go for that. The courier? No, not fast enough. Catch it. We'll just continue. That was such a fierce chase coming up from Pran. They dive all the way into the tier 2 tower. Under the, under the tower range. And they did not get punished. Out of that, that was a bit unacceptable to be honest like knowing how how much they've overextended themselves and all they lost is just shaman uh none of there we got gone on but the tower will just scare the rest of them away miri and azalea will just wait for the next creep wave we haven't seen the combo coming out from mirana and et so far we don't see the storm into arrow just yet. I think they might want to start thinking about that, making that happen because that's such a good way to get kills easily. All right, I mean, but Moonlight is now going to be committed. The shackle. This could be an easy arrow right in and hits Gia. Okay, Honey Lisa does go down. Nana's a little low. Ningen is now going to fight, and they've got the Starlight as well. Gia's just trying to go in, and but nobody's died from Bren for some reason. Moonlight is now going to be committed. They do have the vision, and they're going to try to focus on Nana. 
who ends up getting saved by Honey Lisa coming out of left field. The TP was on point. Cat Chaser's gonna try to wrap around. I don't know if they continue fighting for this one. Cat Chaser's got Corosa Pays, but she's in a bad spot as she walks into Jill, gets pulled back by the remnant. They do have the crush. Zelly right back in with a burrow strike. Uses the wand, at least for now. The, the spirit is gonna be used, but just steals a little bit of their power. But that's pretty much it. Zelia will go down Jill, and uh Jill is like, what the hell? My Uber just exploded. Yeah, that was pretty cool because the arrow was for the life stealer, but Hazel jumped in to block the arrow and the then get saved by the life stealer in fast. So that was like a pretty good safe synergy coming out from Brains, but unfortunately it wasn't enough and Hazel will still fall. But all in all though, they're not losing too much because they still the managed to force the buyback coming out from out of Titan and they did not lose much um, important heroes from that engagement. Uh, still okay, but Morphing is the one that really did not involve in that fight. So she was there just trying to soak up some XP and also trying to farm as fast as possible here. She's not anywhere near the last dealer though. She's so behind and I, I, I'm feeling like, you know, I mean, she's got Morbid Mass. She wants to get Yasha next. Um, into Manta, is that, the, is that the call or do you go for the shotgun build? I think... Oh wait, do they, can they get anything? I don't no, think so. No way. Mm. Normally you want you want to go for EB when you're ahead. Yeah. When you're behind, you probably want to go for some defensive item because Void Spirit normally um, Void Spirit will go for Agony for the yeah. silence. But it seems like Void Spirit is not great for that though, so maybe Manta Star is not that desperately needed. But still, Yasha I think is uh you you, you just couldn't skip Yasha, that's too good of an item for Morphling. But less I think I think the next item actually after Yasha it really depends on what Void Spirit is having. Mm -hmm. Well, top three going away in terms of net worth to Brandy Sports. Honey Lisa does need to run, need to be careful. But Brandy Sports do this time and time again. And it's funny because, you know, I, I'm not sure who picks what, but it looks like they're going to continue to play the same side in the sense of Foxy Gaming is still on, on the dire. But Radiant have, in my opinion, done a good job of understanding how to choke them out, right? Getting that, controlling that triangle and doing the same thing of just, you know, Dyer's just taking away a lot of the farm that Foxy Gaming can get access to. Yeah, this is the comfortable way of Brandy's birthday. Always, like this is, I don't remember which time this is, but they have, they've been doing this every single time when they have playing advantage. Radiant's they'll just turn that into attack. constantly choking out their opponent by sticking together as a trial. And as you can see, the two supports, Shaman Lion, uh, support Shaman Lina, always together. And Sang King, most of the time, uh, Hizaya, she will be the one setting up kills for the two supports as well. And. Tanking dagger used after assembly minutes. That's a very, very fast timing for a set for an offlane tanking. Yeah, done an actual yeah, like that in Yules, you just have so many different outs, so many way, different ways to kind of deal with this, right? When they crush you and everything, and they're just trying to go on you. But it looks like there's gonna be a smoke attempt here, and they do have an infest bomb. Hazelia, the only one that's uh not in this position. Uh, smoke on smoke, Honey Lisa actually popped forward, Astral Step, and that's going to be the infest. They blow up Honey Lisa right away. Cat Chasers, they're going to look to commit for this. The arrow does end up connecting. The Serpent Wards are going to be committed. They have the Shackles in, and they've got Miri right where they want her. No, she dissimulates away, but the nice Epic Center just doing work, and it looks like they're going to just destroy them. They got four for nothing. Moonlight is now going to be committed. Sleepless is looking to just TP away, and the TP, the BMs, and Nana, I'm sure, is tilting. Oh my god, that was so sad. I think target selection, that was a bit off by the morphing because she could easily just wait for him to finish off the Void Spirit. But all the while, she has been keeping an eye on the Shaman. She went for the Shaman, knowing how important the hero is. And she missed the Void Spirit kill there. And then, of course, Zaya just came in last. And we talked about how strong Sand King is as a counter initiator. That was a perfect epicenter into Boros Strike plus Sandstorm there that cleaned everyone out. I mean, the timing, like, Hazelia was not even in position, right? And the fact that I was like, oh, she's a little bit far away. But in the way that team fight went, it actually was perfectly timed right when she could Burl Strike Epicenter in. Okay, as I say that, she goes right back in again. Dill has to rage back, Cat Chaser. They want probably something, seeing as that they're all back here. But Jill is just super fast, and I don't think they're going to be able to catch up. As I say that, Cat Chaser, very, very quick. <laughs> and running up and going, direct, going ham. Right for Jill. Oh, the blink in forward. They're trying to go for Jill here. Miri is making her way across. 
And I feel like, okay, Foxy Gaming probably realized that they've gone a little too far as they're trying to retreat now. Ooh, the stun. Oh, they stop into the arrow. Here's the Earth Splitter, and that's going to do some work. Ligaya so low. Cat Chaser does go down. Ligaya's up on next. Nana's just trying to kill her, but gets Yules, and Ligaya stays alive with very little HP. And Nana is looking to go down, completely baited. And they're going to get Ningen on top of this one. And more VM tips that are coming. And they were attacking Nana, not only mentally, but also via Dota. And oh, killing. no. Oh, this is really, really bad. I mean, this will be the one dying as well. She, like, she was the one that set up so many potentially game-ending Echo Storm there. Like, team fight winning Echo Storm there. But her cores just didn't have enough damage. Morphing did not have anything, she does not have any points on the Deathish Strike. So no burst damage at all from Morphling, she maxed out the waveform. But she will have to, it also means that she will have to throw herself into the middle of the fight every single time if she will want to make damage with the waveform. And that is definitely not a good signal for his team, for her team because Spirit Wrestle is ready. There's so many chains done coming up from Brandy Sports and even though she's, she's shifting all the way to strength, she could not withstand the da the damage coming out from Brandy's but with the spirit eyes on herself. Look at look at the network, right? Nana right now is <laughs> like, oh no, all the way at the bottom, right? She's actually below Lagaya, who's a support player, right? Like I mean, this is a bad spot, and you're looking to take team fights. Yes, your team set up an amazing fight for you, had the control, the stuns, the sleep, all of that stuff was which was perfect. But hey, at the end of the day, you have Morbid Mask and you have a Blade of Alacrity. Right, this is not enough for you to take a team fight at 21 minutes. Dyer's middle not at all. Has been not at all. Hmm, this is getting really tough for Foxy. <laughs> they so completed on life stealer, so they can keep going for these early tower pushes, or they could also go for the early rush as well. They don't have the medallion, but should be able to just finish off this Roshan with the a lot of armor reduction coming out from Lifestealer of oh, Corrosion. They saw, and they have enough disable just to chase down this Roshan as well. They just have a ton of damage right now. And, uh, I mean, Foxy Gaming, yeah, they've got pretty much their alt up off cooldown right now, but I don't think there's any real way to kind of just, you know, contest here. They're pretty much doing this blind, but... <laughs> I mean, Roshan just went down so quickly. Right, with this Rosh, they should be able to take, slowly take down all the remaining tier 2 towers from Foxy Gaming side and just slowly choke them even harder and harder. Morphling, about 3-4 to four minutes ago, we, we were still talking that she needs to get to the Yasha and now in 22 minutes she finally does it. This is way too lower than, way too slower than expected though. Yeah. I mean, didn't have a very great lane. Like, I think that Bren did a great Dyer's job of focusing on, you know, making sure that Nana had a rough start. Um, and I think that Foxy, they need to look at the replay in the first 10 minutes of just Dyer's doing a better job, setting it up so that Nana can, you know, uh, have a successful good game by just, you know, maybe try laning it, whatever it is, whatever it takes to make sure that she has the space to farm. Because again, I haven't seen it in the past two games. Yeah, that's true. That really comes down to the, to the, to the death at level 4 that she wasn't supposed Radiant's to die at and everything just attack. kind of snowballed from there and Bran has absolutely take advantage of this mistake coming out from Foxy Gaming and we, know, we, we, have all, we, have, we have always known that Bran Esports they are a team that will want to be playing aggressively they want to be the one snowboarding and keeping control of the game and they are doing exactly that again this game they are very consistent in this way yeah they're just uh... I mean, they're a force to be uh, reckoned with in that sense. I, I I think the game one caught people off guard, and I think that Brandy Sports thought they were strong, and then in, in actuality, in the laning phase, they weren't actually that strong. So seeing them uh, now, this is the Bren that we know, where they have that net worth, and now they can be taking, now they can be aggressive, so to speak, which was what they were trying to do without the net worth. And so uh, a bit of a difference um, in, in that sense. In fast into the sinking, they're looking for something here. They don't see anyone though. Like this time around, Foxy, they're splitting the map a little bit harder. But the one similarity again compared uh, with the last game is that 24 minutes in, the three tier one towers of Brand are still alive. 
So that is really what is choking Foxy in their base right now. They don't they don't get to have too much map to play with. And if you look at Nana, she's all the way hiding in the trees, not farming at all. So even if she's not dying, she's not, also not getting any creeps in. Yeah, I think, uh, oh, the courier does go down to the creeps. Score one for the creeps there. Um, but I, I, I think Nana at this moment went to the woods alone to just kind of uh, meditate a little bit because uh, she's not able to farm, not able to find any space. Um, and she's going to try to do what she can, but Jill is focused on this T2. Medic medication, meditation not working well. Oh. Uh, working well. She walked into the vision range of Bangsport and next thing you know, she wasn't anymore. DD rune on one spirit now, plus the Agonims plus Spirit Wrestle. So Manta's Doubt is absolutely the item that Nana needs here, but that is so far away. And she's actually queuing up the S and Y of everything. Might not be the item that she needs though. However, this is very attacking. Oh, they're gonna just look to go. Cat is just gonna try to fight one versus two. Oh, doing some damage! Almost killed Lagaya, but not enough. Miri's there. Got her back. For these seconds without the Slada. And Slada is the richest hero on Foxy's side, holding the BKB as well. So without the strongest hero on the map for them, they might not be able to do this. We still don't see the Echo Stop. Okay, now we see it. Oh, they're gonna go for this. They're gonna look to fight this four versus five. I don't think that this is a good idea. Jill is getting very low with the rage. And uh, yeah, in, into the infest, into the body. Hazelia is gonna queue it up. No, she actually cancels it and she backs off here. I think Hazelia, I think uh, Jill was like, I'm too low, do not go in. And Hazelia was like, all right, we'll cancel this one. We'll abort mission. Oh, they're gonna go in now. Ningen is getting a little bit low and trying to fight this one. And the infest bomb is just on point. Honey Lisa with the stomp, but don't really care because I got rage. And they're gonna look to focus on this one. Cat Chaser is now out, and that's the biggest one. Yeah, you have a two man crush, but can you fight this? The buybacks are real. They're all coming in. Hazelia's looking to just run away. They get a nice little bash there. They got something with Hazelia there, and they're trying to focus on Jill now. Do they have the damage with the arrow? They're trying to focus this up. They get the stop, and that's gonna be ages. They got something out of this. A nice little sleep here. They're gonna put, put out Corrosive Haze on a number of heroes, but I think that's gonna be the end of it with Hazelia being the only Dyer's one that actually died. Three buybacks for that, though. Well, yeah, they successfully defend their racks. Morphling did not die, so that's a good news for them. But Morphling also did not involve in any of their kills, so she actually didn't get any experience. And now, Brains, but they're making a move and morph. Oh no. No, 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 no. Just the amount of burst, the pullback, and again, the disrespect. This is the thing where, I mean. Oh, <laughs> Nana, you just need somebody. Like, do you just have your team just babysit you? Like, what do you need to do for Nana, right? I mean, someone has to position themselves in front of the Morphling because there's just so many ways right now for Brad to jump onto the Morphling. And it's really hard for Morph to react to that because that's the instant silence coming up from Void Spirit. That's the instant Boro Strike coming up from Sand King. It, it kind of seems to me that Nana is not very comfortable with the Morphling. Not comfortable. I, not, I didn't feel the comfort in the face of this void as well. And I thought that this is like, hey, die, die. This is my hero. I'm going to go out swinging with this one, right? Like at the end of the day, like you're going to play your best hero. And I'm not really seeing that, uh, that comfort level. Oh, but the nice arrow that will connect. Shaman's there, but they do have the nice little burrow strike. Nana's going to look to go, but the inbox bomb is real. And they blow up Nana again. She does have buyback and she wants to go. Cat Chaser just trying to run. Honey Tongue, or Honey Lisa, excuse me, dies there. And uh, they're going to use Moonlight just to kind of disengage. But Gia's the only one that's been killed. And now they focus their attention on the bottom racks or the bottom T3. Oh, they've run out of juice right now. No BKB on Slutter. That's buyback from Morph, but she doesn't need anything right now. Step. And Ningen looks like a support player at this point, which is how much burst that Bren have right now. You're Destroying strong. them. Four are down. Sleepless is going to go back into the fountain to tell the tale of what these five terrible people from Bren did to their family. But it looks like the taunt back in and they pushed her out. The remnant, the disrespect cat chaser. Just be like, hey, this is my fountain. Come on, man. Don't go inside. 
Oh, not like it's they're dancing out. They're dancing outside of their fountain right now. Oh, this feels bad. Oh. They're not calling GG yet. They want to fight to the last second. But is there anything worth fighting for anymore, though? <laughs> well, <laughs> I think you gotta play it out, right? Uh, and, mm -hmm. I, and I applaud. If you wanted to just give up, you'd play League of Legends. <laughs> okay, cool. That I'm just saying. Come just out saying. nowhere. Okay, cool. No, but League of Legends actually has a surrender mechanic. But okay, not no. against <laughs> Fast bomb. And Dill actually says it with a chat box and says a surprise. And uh, yeah, that's not looking good for them. It looks like, uh, again, another round of tips. And they're going to focus on the T4s at this point. And that's it. They call GG. GG, there it is. They're going to just pad the stats one last time. Let the wards do the ancients. And the GG, congratulations. Game three goes the way of Brandy Sports. They win out the FSL Dota 2 Open. 34 at 9, 30 minutes, 25 seconds. Um, and like I said, you know, I'm right. You're wrong in the sense that you called Foxy Gaming. You thought they're, they're, uh, their heroes are on point. But, you know, this is a game of momentum. And I think we saw that going into game three. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, someone has to be wrong sometimes so that it shows how good you are, right? I mean, cherish that because that's not going to happen very often. But definitely, Brain Sports, they, they, they showcase how strong they are, the understanding of their draft, the understanding of the play right now. They play correctly to what the meta really likes right now, to play fast. And then they, the way they snowball the game, the way they keep their advantage was really something that's worth studying for a lot of the teams out there. Because every time they do this very choking kind of attack, they do it in style, do it in a lot of discipline. And that's definitely worth looking into and learning for. If you're looking at the graphs, just notice that, you know, usually in your pub games or whatever, you see a lot of up and downs. It looks like a roller coaster in that sense. But in this one, if we're looking at just team XP and net worth, it's like a straight upward, you know, line, right? And then Brandy Sports, they 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 had their advantages. They knew exactly how the, to do, like, to continue and to win the game. And this is how you win. You just close them out. You just, no nonsense, no dying, no unnecessary jump-ins. And if we're looking at what, you know, Miri did 10-0 and 17. Jill was 4-0 and 7. Ligaya with 11 kills, probably kill his kill stealing here and there, but 11-2 and 11. Like, this is your, you know, just amazing performance by Brandy Sports. I think we just saw how strong this team is. And it's and I love the fact that we've seen Brandy Sports. They were always the bridesmaid, never the bride, in the sense that they were losing to Pacific Pink in that sense. But they're here now. Congratulations. They are your FSL Dota 2 Open Champion. Yeah, they probably have to thank Fosty Gaming a lot as well for bringing down Pacific, Pacific Ping, right? Mm -hmm. So for Proxy Gaming, even though this game, last game was a little bit tough for them, but they definitely should not be upset or shame for themselves because that was a very honorable run all the way from the loser bracket uh, from the lower bracket and they did give us they did give us a lot of very fantastic gameplay especially the game one i will never forget all those wombo combo coming out from them that was beautiful dota unfortunately brain sport proved to be better just uh, just better this time yeah what a great series great event great tournament uh and it was a pleasure casting with you arthur they can find you on leon arthur dota on Facebook and of course YouTube as well. Uh, you can find me and, uh, and things not Dota related. If you do, if you want to get better at Dota, you follow Leon Arthur Dota. If you want to get better at everything else, you follow me at Holler TV. Uh, feel free to give us a shout out as well. And of course, thank you so much from FSL, um, Intel, Yahoo, Tokenized Exchange. Because without you guys, we would not have any of this. Any final words before we sign out? Nothing much. Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there. Enjoy your time. Take care and be safe. All right. And with that said, thank you so much. Until the next Dota 2 Open, please do stay tuned. Follow and like FSL Dota 2 and find out all the games that they're doing. They're doing amazing tournaments. And again, one last time, congratulations to Brandy Sports for winning it out. And we will catch you guys next time.